Hello there, I'm back for another round of Genshin Impact. And also, yeah, probably finishing uh, the Lantern Ride since we still have like the last quest open. And we haven't messed with uh, Xenu's story yet, which I'm also like curious to see uh, what this will be about. But yeah, first things first. Finishing up this one. It's gonna make me wait again. <sighs> Why do I always have to wait for this stuff? I really don't like this waiting mechanic in Genshin, not gonna lie. It doesn't really do anything for me. <sighs> Being too popular can be such a hassle. Who knew the people would adore me so much? I actually... Right. It needs a few more minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, Paimon almost forgot! Didn't Zhang Li say Hu Tao was also planning on spending some time in Chaoying Village? We didn't have anything else to do today, right? Why don't we go have a look around? Maybe we'll run into her! Hmm, let's do that. Also, actually, you know the thing? They make you do those fighting stuff, but you actually don't have, like... Actually, a proper time on your UI. As you go into the time menu, you don't even see what time it actually is in-game. Kind of silly, to be honest. Fuck is screaming huh? that loudly. Did you hear that? Sunshine! Blue skies! Good vibes! Right? So Paimon wasn't just hearing things. Hmm, that voice sounds really familiar. Why would someone randomly well, shout that? <laughs> Empire will make your way up to the mountain in search of the source of the shouting. As far as you can make it out, it's almonds. This and cocoa pays dead. Sounds delicious, that's for sure. The lively voice invigorates your steps and you'll ascend the mountain in no time. <gasps> what are they doing here? Nadia, Grand! Okay, I'm Grand. Interesting. Interesting. Well, if it isn't my dear partners. You see, I told you that something good was going to happen during our travels today. I have to say, sometimes the Steambird's astrology column is spot on. <laughs> it's just your lucky day. Are you guys also here to catch the festivities? Oh, and that reminds me. Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite. And to you, to you as well. Voice we heard. That was you, right, Navia? Oh, 
impressive. You could tell it was me from that far away. You've got good ears. That or your voice is just really loud. <laughs> I would say the second part. Well, of course it is. After all, I'm a boss. Indeed. I suppose it's an asset. Sure is. Having a loud voice is a handy tool when it comes to communication. And giving wait, orders. Wait, wait, wait. That wasn't even Paimon's point. Paimon just wants to know why you two were shouting from the top of this deserted mountain. There was something about almonds, maybe? And buell fruit? Ooh, is it some sort of secret code? No, it's not a code. The words are meaningless. <laughs> wow. Perhaps. But the act of shouting was very meaningful indeed. That's just what mountain climbers do, right? After all the hard work it takes to make it to the top, as you stand on the summit looking out at the vast scenery, it's not easy to resist the urge to release those emotions. <laughs> exactly. You get me, partner. I was afraid that it would cause a disturbance, so I asked the locals around here and they said it was fine. Apparently most hikers like to shout when they get to the top, so the locals are used to it by now. <laughs> wow, well, I would be so, annoyed by it. So, you see, it's not just me. I guess everyone shouts from the top of a mountain at some point in their life. Uh, speak for yourself. When you're stressed, don't you ever just get the urge to do something for no reason? Hmm, not really. If I ever get stressed, I just go hunting. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty good way to relieve stress. Hmm. What I choose to hunt depends on my mood. Huh? Let's hunt Paimon. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, why don't you two give it a try? Shout anything you want. It's a real stress reliever. Hmm. As long as Paimon has clothes on her back and food in her belly, Paimon doesn't think there's any stress that needs relieving. Oh, I bet you guys are just too embarrassed to let loose. No need to be shy. Even Farina was shouting from the top of this mountain earlier. <laughs> Wait, Farina, why? Huh? Did Paimon hear that right? Farina's also here? In Chaoying Village? Believe in your ears. It is indeed as you heard. Actually, the reason we climbed this mountain in the first place was also because we heard the sound of shouting. <laughs> yes. Well. We could just about make out someone yelling things like, Help me! And what should I do? So we hurried up here to check it out. And what do you know? Miss Farina was standing right there, all red in the face. She practically sprinted back down the mountain the minute she saw us. Ah, that reminds me. I believe what she actually said was, so help me, I will figure out what I should do about this script. <laughs> uh, so, you could actually hear what she was saying? Why didn't you say so earlier? I thought someone was really in trouble. I figured we would come check out the situation either way. Why not let her keep some privacy? And now we have to read it anyway, though. Caught Farina in the middle of some stress relief as well. She probably would have never thought. No, she definitely would have never thought she would run into anyone she knew all the way out here. I think so. Uh, we ran into Nervalette on the way here as well, but he was already on his way back, so they probably weren't together. The whole Fontanian what? crew up here. Nervalette was here too? Yep. <laughs> Interesting, it's like so many lantern rides because like... Fontaine wasn't a thing there yet, like at least a playable thing there yet, so you never heard him. And now Fontaine is open. Suddenly Fontaineans everywhere in the US. <laughs> what was he doing here? It couldn't have been for vacation. I think it just might have been actually. But apparently he only stayed for half a day before heading back. He's a very busy man. Hmm. Nevillette is not the type to take much time off. Taking even a half day for himself is already a huge step in the right direction. Didn't Charlotte publish an article on the Liyue tea industry recently? Maybe he was inspired to come buy some tea after reading that article. You know, just like you were. My situation is completely different. I'm here because I was asked to accompany you. The 
property purchase is simply an added bonus of this location. Sure. You spontaneans in your tea drinking. <laughs> oh, that's not for me. I lost a bet with Ridesley, and now I have to buy him something. It was just a spur of the moment sort of bet. Ridesley gets really invested in that sort of thing, but he couldn't care less about what he wins in the end. You could give him mint plants that you plucked from the side of the road, and he wouldn't even mind. Uh, if only he was that easygoing when it came to talking business. <laughs> In any case, I'm pretty sure the tea you bought is this region's specialty. What is it called again? Uh, Nervalette even mentioned it earlier. Yes, yes, that's the one. You didn't really buy ten boxes, did you? <sighs> Please. Do I look like someone who would fall for that sort of marketing trap? <laughs> huh, that reminds me. You guys said you only came up here because you heard my voice, right? I hope it didn't put you out. You must have had other plans for the day. Cloud Retainer got called out there. <laughs> Quite nice. Oh, that's right. Who tell? A few days ago, we heard that a friend was going to be in Chaoying Village. So we decided to come and see if we could run into her. Oh dear. We've been chatting for quite some time. I'm sorry for keeping you. <laughs> That's good. We should probably head out and look for Hu Tao. No need to stay on our account. We just got up here, so we're gonna stay around for a little longer. Hmm. Go and meet your friend. We can meet up in Chaoying Village later. Sounds good. We're gonna head down the mountain then. See you later. Adishana. Doing fine. How about you? How is your uh, sister uh, situation treating you? <laughs> uh, okay. Ooh, Farina is there with Zhong Li. Okay, now I'm curious. Chaoying Village is known for its tea, but you know what else they have with tea? That's right, dim sum! Didn't Gaming say something about dim sum being eaten in the morning? Oh, Paimon wonders if we can still get some at this time of day. Fine too. Paimon doesn't care what kind of tea it is as long as it comes with some tasty snacks. Now let's see what kind of yummy things we can find around here. Uh. Good, good, and you're fine. Paimon's not seeing things, is she? Is that Farina standing between Zhongli and Hu Tao? <laughs> too bad, I guess. Wonder what they're talking about. Zhongli knows a lot of stuff. Maybe he's telling Farina about Chaoying Village. Oh, or maybe Hu Tao is trying to rope Farina into being one of her clients. Hey, this isn't the Fortress of Meripede. <laughs> but Paimon could be convinced for the right price. Let's say, loser buys the winner three huge bowls of seafood kanji. This bet between those two is like doesn't even make any sense because when you're buying stuff it always comes from our pocket <laughs> I don't think Paimon has her own money since Zhang Li is there Paimon bets things are pretty tame it's decided then Paimon votes for tour guide Zhang Li alright no time to waste let's go see who's right <laughs> oh great, now Paimon shouting too. Way to interrupt the oh. conversation. Well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Seems like our luck just keeps on growing. <laughs> that we were able to meet you both without prior arrangement must mean that this is quite the serendipitous meeting indeed. Uh -huh. Oh, so both of you are acquainted with the Traveler and Paimon then. 
I'm pretty sure you didn't learn that one from me. Uh -um. <laughs> I must admit, I am a bit surprised to see you here, Traveler. But seeing as you're a hero who's been all over to that, it makes sense that you would be well-traveled and well-connected. Duh. Since we have found ourselves in each other's company within this fertile land, allow me to take this opportunity to wish you a happy lantern rite. I'm curious. I bet Jean Lee is aware that Farina is the Archon, but is Farina aware that uh, Jean Lee is the Archon of Liura? Or, well, like, was the Archon of Liura? It appears you have been to Fontaine, then. Given your proclivity to spread good deeds wherever you go, it's no surprise that you would make the acquaintance of a celebrity as illustrious and celebrated as Miss Farina. Uh, <laughs> that's quite high praise. What I mean to say is, you flatter me, Mr. Zhongli. Although I've built up a certain following within Fontaine, it is no reflection of strength or wisdom. I stand before you right now as nothing more than an ordinary traveler in search of beautiful scenery and creative inspiration. There is definitely more to Mr. Zhongli than meets the eye. I could tell as much from our conversation earlier. I guess that confirms that Farina is not aware that Zhongli was the previous Archon of Liyue. <laughs> Given his breadth of knowledge on both academic and worldly matters, there's no way he hasn't heard about what happened in Fontaine. Is he just feigning ignorance for my benefit? No, 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 no. Ay, yeah. You're no common tourist. I simply won't have you talk about yourself that way. Oh, does that mean Hu Tao also knows? <laughs> Jumping to conclusions right quickly. You may quickly. not have heard, friends, but... Miss uh, um, Hutao. Miss Farina is now one of my esteemed clients. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yep. <laughs> you won the bet. It was Hustler Hutao. Okay, okay, you win. Guess Paimon will have to break into the hidden stash at the bottom of her shoe. What the fuck? <laughs> What's this about winning something? Don't tell me. You two were placing bets on us. Uh, uh -huh. oh, we just saw you guys standing on the side of the road and couldn't help but take guesses as to what you were talking about. Oh, I see. That means you, my friend, must have guessed that I was trying to promote my business to Miss Farina. That I do, my friend. What was Paimon's guess then? Paimon thought Zhang Li was showing the newbie around. Ah, by newbie, you mean me, right? If that's the case, then Paimon's guess was also correct. Oh, that's right. Mr. Zhang Li was telling me about some great sightseeing spots in the area. <laughs> you see? Paimon was right too! Both of our guesses were right. There can't be a winner or a loser. Hey, don't be upset, traveler. <laughs> How about this? You buy Paimon a bull, and Paimon will also buy you a bull. Uh, as for the third bull... Since I was the subject of the bet, perhaps it should go to me? You know, as a congratulations for the huge deal I just struck. <laughs> I was just joking. Anyway, I should be the one treating you. The funeral parlor is about to bring in quite the sum after all. Okay. Oh, Paimon almost forgot to ask about the most important question. Did, I uh, something happen recently, Farina? Huh? What do you mean? I... Uh... Well, you know, with you enlisting the services of Wang Xiong Funeral Parlor and all. Oh, well, yes. Really? Oh, no. Paimon is so sorry for your loss. Although Paimon may have not known the person, please accept Paimon's deepest... Whoa, 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 it's not like that, Paimon. Huh? But Paimon just thought... 
since you hired the services of a funeral parlor and all. Hey, it's not that big of a stretch. <laughs> really, Paimon? It's not like you don't know me. Do I look like I know anyone who would ask me to coordinate their funeral? True. Miss Hu Tao is simply helping prepare some props for my film. Not too long ago, I read a collection of horror stories from Li Yue. The content was spectacular. In fact, I still feel the need to sleep with the light on even now. Uh, <laughs> well. Anyway, that's not the point. Now that Fontaine's biggest star has returned to the stage, I figured it's about time the industry enjoyed a breath of fresh air. It's so interesting, like, after you've seen Purina in the Arkham Quest of um, Fontaine, and now she is, like, acting so casually after everything is over. She sometimes has some really innocent sides to her. <laughs> <laughs> Which you would, like, not have expected. I really quite like that about a character, I'm not gonna lie. Hey! <laughs> That's pretty good! I'll have to remember that for my ad posters. Oh, Paimon sees! That makes a lot of sense. So, did you come to Liyue just to enlist the services of Wangcheng Funeral Parlor? Well, not exactly. My original plan was to just relax and enjoy the sights. But then I ran into Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhang Li, and, well, you know the rest. I suppose it was meant to be. It was a fated meeting indeed. Zhang Li sure loves his lofty turns of phrase. But if you ask me, it's all thanks to that man who stopped to ask for directions. Oh? Who was it? It's someone you know. Wanna take a guess? What? How did you guess that on your first try? <laughs> Very impressive, my friend. Your guessing game is spot on today. We tell everyone about your encounter with Nairia and Clorinth at the top of the mountain. One look at the pitiful expression of Frida's face is enough to convince you to leave out the part about the shouting. <laughs> huh. Paima never thought Nervalette would be the type to get lost. I'm sure he didn't get lost. <laughs> Even I was able to find my way to this place without any trouble. He was already getting ready to leave by the time I arrived. He just wanted to ask someone about the quickest way to get back to Fontaine. Yep, that's exactly what he asked. This area is full of mountains and rivers. It's normal to not know the fastest route. Yeah, that's true. For him, swimming would pro probably really be the fastest route. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, he always like showed that he can just fly, so yeah. At least in some cutscenes he did. So were you the one that pointed him in the right direction, Hika? Of course. I'm also a guide of sorts, you know. So naturally I also have a great sense of direction. But Speaking of your friend... What about him? He doesn't get out much, does he? Yep, no, he doesn't. Ah, uh, no wonder. He was stiff as a board and way too polite. I would have never guessed he was here on vacation if you hadn't told me. All in all, he was only here for half a day. I'm pretty sure he is the only one who would consider that to be a vacation. Oh? This gentleman you speak of must keep a demanding schedule. I'm sure he does. You didn't see him, but he was dressed like he was about to attend some important meeting. It wasn't anything like what someone would wear on vacation. Is that so? He's to you, Dex of Fontaine, Wait, after all. You didn't see him, Yoli? Unfortunately, no. At the time, it appeared as if Director Hu and Miss Farina were having quite the productive conversation. I know matters of business can take much discussion, so I decided to fetch some tea for them. What a shame. That gentleman seemed like a sophisticated sort of guy. I actually think you two would have hit it off. Yep. Actually, Nivellet and Zhongli give off, like, kind of the same vibe. They would, they would vibe quite well together. Not gonna lie. 
I actually, I actually really want to see them intact. I just would like see what they would get into if they had like the chance to talk to each other. Just like right now, also like Green and Jungle and like Brutal. Also quite interesting to have like these characters and interact with one another. Is that so? <laughs> Judging by how Zhongli is acting and taking into consideration if that's true or that entity. Yep. <laughs> Could Zhongli have been avoiding him on purpose? Ah. Yeah, okay. It's understandable why would he will avoid him. Hmm. Oh, I see. <laughs> to borrow Miss Farina's turn of phrase, perhaps it just wasn't meant to be. Yep. But since, like, Akram's and the Primordial Dragons have, like, difficult history, I can understand why he would avoid him. Though... I do think if they like, just would talk to each other casually, I think there wouldn't be any problem, to be honest. And well, Zhongli kind of himself is also a track, so... I like, like his Rex Leathers form as an... Yeah, Adepti was a dragon, so... I think they actually would like wipe quite well together. As long as they like just not get into the topic of Archons and Primordial Dragons. <laughs> well, with the Traveler around, I'm sure you'll have a chance to get to know each other at some point. That's right! She's got more friends than she knows what to do with! Hmm. We do have quite a lot. Well, that's certainly true. Oh, that reminds me. If you get the chance, you should try and talk to Nervalette into loosening up a bit. Just tell him the Palais Mermonia isn't going to fall apart if he disappears for a few days. <laughs> he shouldn't keep himself cooped up all the time. Even clams open their shells to let in fresh water every once in a while, right? If he's really that much of a stickler for protocol, he can fill out a leave of absence request. He'd uh, have to approve it himself, since he handles that sort of thing now, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Writing an absence of, uh, like, a leave of absence request to yourself. <laughs> Why not, I guess? Seems like this gentleman is also in charge of something pretty important. Hey, yeah, uh, sounds like a pretty uptight sort of guy, all right. In my experience, a leader needs to be able to roll with the punches. That also includes knowing when and what to prioritize. It seems like your friend still has a lot of growing to do. If I remember correctly, he's already several thousands of years old. <laughs> uh, you're quite right, Miss Sutao. <laughs> you already had a lot of growing behind himself, but... I guess after a lot of time, if you like, live for that long, you get like, stuck too much in your usual habits. Then it could quite seem like that you're like inexperienced to others because you're just so deep into your own habits. Oh? Traveler, Miss Farina. Those two individuals over there appear to recognize you. chatting over here and we're wondering if we could join in <clears throat> um please excuse the interruption oh <laughs> so polite no apologies necessary any friend of the traveler and miss farina is a friend of mine ah <laughs> straight to the point i like it everyone's always around you and begins to introduce himself you really are kind of deserving of attention your friends i guess 
Also, I actually could expect like Navi on Hutao hitting an old quite well too. Hutao's eyes light up when she is about Kruin's profession. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but a quick explanation from Freena and Navia seems to dispel some of her more misguided ideas. Hmm, it's getting late. If we want to catch a boat back before dark, we should probably get going. Indeed. Then, Miss Farina. Oh, uh, uh, yes? When are you planning to head back? Do you need us to escort you? Oh, um, I, I don't think that will be necessary. I mean, you're not my subordinate anymore. You don't need to look after me. Um, I didn't mean it that way. It's normal for friends to travel home together if they run into each other on the road. Mm, there are a lot of mountainous roads in this area. I imagine they'll be even harder to navigate after dark. Exactly! Just like in those ghost stories. <laughs> Eight paths converge in a wood. Beside them an old house is stood. If you dare to go inside, not a soul will greet your eye. Wutao already seems to know how to push Farina's buttons. <laughs> but if you take a closer look, there may be something you mistook. A candle flickers to and fro, yet there is no wind to make it so. What is its secret? What could it mean? In this wood, where mystery screams. Ooh. Also, gonna just really like this image in terms of colors. <laughs> My dear Tamuzo, uh, uh, ladies, no, uh, I mean friends, please take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh. <laughs> Gotta say, Farina, you are really quite the character. By the way, did I hear you mention that Chlorand used to work under you? Then you must have also been a leader at some point. Uh, well, that's, uh, all in the past now. Besides, being a leader is hard. It wasn't the right job for me. I prefer how things are now. I can come and go as I please, and get to enjoy the sweet taste of freedom. I see. Well, you've certainly picked an apt place to relax. Chaoying Village is an exemplary choice. Only the best. <laughs> and I've learned a lot too. Thank you so much, Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhongli. Hey, Yukimura. Good to see you. <laughs> In one or four? <laughs> it's fine. You thanked us more than enough already. The next time you're in this neck of the woods, I'll treat you to some dim sum in the city. Dim sum? Is that some kind of liyue term for snacks or desserts? They are a part of it. It's basically a table full of as much tea, sweets, and good company as you can manage. Well, first you have to convince me to let you do it in the first place. <laughs> So it's basically a tea party. <laughs> Sounds great. Make sure to order the winter melon cake <laughs> and the lotus flower crisp. They're so sweet and delicious. Paimon knows you'll love them. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it then. Wait, but didn't you guys say you were here on vacation? How come you're all going home empty-handed? Of course I am. I bought tons of fun things to bring home with me. A kite, a parasol, a little tin frog that jumps. Oh, and a stuffed toy of a mythical beast. Hmm, a tempting offer. I may think about it. Chlorand is the one who didn't buy anything for herself. So all you're bringing back with you is that tea? And some tea-flavored hard candies. They're for Sijuin. 
Rand isn't much of a shopaholic. Well, one of us has to practice restraint. <laughs> hey, I'm hardly reckless with my Mora. I'll have you know, all the purchases I made today were well within my budget. Me? Oh, well, I bought some tea, of course. I just had to try all the varieties recommended in the Steambird. I have... I haven't really seen any for like Navi or Clarinda liked. Actually, I have seen a few which are like for Navia, but all of them were pro for some reason. They had like some missing textures. You like that if you were literally literally could like see right through Navia's like belly and such. So yeah. <laughs> And Corinne doesn't have that, like, many, besides, like, your usual not safe for work stuff, but, yeah, I'm not using those mods. Especially not boss on streams. <laughs> that would be, like, very bad. Yep. Horny jail. Definitely. Other than that, just some bits and bobs, you know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. They should all be things I can use. I think. <laughs> she fell for your marketing trips. Uh, now Paimon's even more confused. If you bought that much stuff, where did it all go? Into one of Winnie's magic packets? Oh, actually, Monsieur Nervillette took them with him. Oh, so that's what happened. Wait, what? <laughs> Why did he take them? He's not hoarding treasure, is he? Oh, that's quite the imagination you've got there, Paimon. Yeah, are known Monsieur for hoarding Nervillette treasures. Monsieur just saw the amount of bags we had and offered to take them back for us. I felt a bit bad at first, but, uh, I really did have a lot of stuff. <laughs> he even offered to deliver my gifts to the Fortress of Maripede for me, once he's done with the day's work. Novelette is a man of his word. If he says he can do something, then he means it. That's See, true. even Clorand was happy to take him up on his offer. If even his trusty subordinate agreed, then who was I to refuse? Wow, he seems like a real gentleman. Maybe he's not as uptight as I thought. If only the funeral parlor had an employee as thoughtful, proactive, and responsible as him. I mean, you have to only. I would see. I would like the economist thoughtful and responsible. Maybe not as proactive, but. Right, Zhang Li? Indeed. Paran said Novelet offered to deliver her gifts to Risley. So if we go to the entrance of the Fortress of Maripede, maybe we'll run into Novelet. But we don't know exactly when he'll show up. Oh, that reminds me. A new year of work is about to begin. If there's anything you want to talk about, Zhongli, you know you can come to me. I'm all ears. Does the director have any concerns? It just seemed like you were a bit preoccupied today, and much less talkative than usual. He barely said anything other than, Is that so? And, indeed. If you ask me, I'd say you're having a midlife crisis. You're getting to be around that age, after all. <laughs> if you knew her, Tom. But yeah, he has been complaining about erosion of the memories and mind. Is that so? <laughs> I jest. Given its distance from the city, Chaoying Village enjoys a much slower pace of life. Surrounded by such peace and tranquility, I also seem to have developed a proclivity for inactivity. I apologize for making you worry. Ah, um, I see. <laughs> what do you think, Traveler? Is this atmosphere putting you in a lazy mood, too? Hmm... 
I mean, the atmosphere is nice. Wow, you are getting really good at these kinds of lines. <laughs> Indeed. What do the other three have to say? Well, everyone, make sure that you've got all your belongings with you before we leave. If there's any souvenirs anyone still wants to buy, the time is now. Reliable as ever, Miss President. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Florian is right, though. You really are reliable. It's not what she's saying. It's the way she's saying it. I will say, but I never thought you'd be so easygoing outside of work, Clorand. The tone of voice you use when you're working doesn't exactly make you seem like the type who enjoys interacting with people. Well, I try to keep my professional and private life separate. That includes my behavior. You take care now, Traveler. Paimon. Ah, trying to act cool now, are we? <laughs> well, I guess it's not an act for you, is it? You are indeed quite strong. <laughs> it's been great talking to you all. I'm really glad I decided to come to Chaoying Village. Maybe we could go on another trip together sometime? Okay, let's see where the new letters. Uh, yeah, Starlight. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Why is the teleport actually so far away from the world, from like the endless force of my repeat? <laughs> it actually gives me like to, uh, the chance to actually check on the fountain again because I haven't why. Okay. you. It has been some time since our last meeting. Few people frequent this location. Since I was able to conclude my work early for the day, I thought I might take a walk and avail myself of this area's peace and quiet. You call this early? Do you always work this late, Nevelet? <laughs> Strictly speaking, that depends on the agenda for the day. I am hardly bereft of time, however, so working late is of little consequence to me. Hmm. Really? I guess. If you have so much time on your hands, then why did you only go to Chaoying Village for half a day? Hmm? First, I should clarify that I was referring to my lifespan, rather than the time at my disposal on any given day. Second, I was unaware you possessed knowledge of my trip to Chaoying Village. I have no let a quick summary of everything that happened today. I see. Thank you for informing me. Yes. They have been safely delivered. <laughs> I have to hand it to Cloran. Just a simple gift delivery, and she has the great and mighty Udex at her beck and call. <laughs> I was just passing through. It was merely an act of convenience. All right. Then I hereby confirm receipt of the goods on behalf of the staff of the Fortress of Merope. A verbal receipt of confirmation? Is such a formality really necessary for a small matter such as this? I guess he's not so stuck up with formalities after all, then. at least when it comes to small things like this. Guess not. <laughs> this quantity of tea, though, seems a little excessive for a gift, don't you think? Before you know it, they'll start accusing me of taking bribes. Ah, about that. Much of that is my own excess, I'm afraid. Nubelet got caught in it, true. Why? What happened? 
Why is everyone besides current <laughs> falling for his marketing traps? <laughs> oh, especially like this somewhat more influential people. It was buy ten boxes, get half off. Ah, that explains it then. <laughs> Rest lost too. Well, go ahead and leave them to me. I'll get through this stash as fast as I can. You have my thanks. Oh, there's something else I'd like to give to you. This is... a stone slate, engraved with a symbolic design. Well, that is an apt description. It is, in actuality, a legal codex. A legal codex, huh? Hmm. Before the advent of modern writing utensils, information was recorded on stone slabs such as this. The law was no different. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why are you Since talking to us about times, it? The scales of justice have symbolized the fairness and impartiality of judiciousness. As a tribute to that sentiment, this slate was designed after a traditional legal codex and engraved with a symbol instead of text. During my travels recently, I chanced upon a roadside stall offering tourists the opportunity to try their hand at the ceramic arts. So I decided to have a go. We joked with Clarence some time ago about gifting you a legal codex. So, here you go. <laughs> okay. Ah, so that's what this is about. I did not expect you to remember it as well. In any case, I hope this can be considered as a reasonable attempt to join in on the banter. It is a very good attempt. Still a bit stiff, though. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Even your sense of humor centers around the law. That's an impressive level of commitment. <laughs> well, a gift of this significance deserves to be put on display, and I know just the place. Front and center in the fortress's showroom. <laughs> ah, surely there's no need for such a grand gesture. Just kidding. I don't have anything like a showroom. True. But we do have a storage room. We can put it next to all the mechanical parts Sijuin has collected. That sounds good to me. So that's what you were doing in Chaoying Village. Indeed. Of course, while I was there, I also took the opportunity to taste the local spring water. The aftertaste is much purer than what I have delivered to me in Fontaine. It stands to reason that the long-distance transport has a tendency to imbue the water with extraneous emotion. If you want to experience the true flavor, you simply have to go to the source. Perhaps I should organize some time off to do the same elsewhere. As they say in you, the balance between work and play is sure to keep your troubles at bay. Oh. Then we are of the same mind. It appears my desire is justified. If you say so, like, you know you don't have to justify a vacation, right? You can just take one. After all, you're hardly bereft of time. You can do whatever you like. <laughs> you're quite right. I suppose I suffer not from a lack of opportunity, but rather a lack of inspiration. However, after reading a few articles about Li Wei's holiday traditions, the idea popped into my head and made itself quite at home. Seeing as I was free of responsibilities for the morning, I decided to depart at once. Refreshing. My spontaneous outing seemed to inspire quite a few other spontaneous decisions as well. Take, for example, my foray into ceramics. At first, soil from the ground is granular and unforgiving, but add the right amount of water, and it becomes soft, moldable, and able to take shape. In the past, I never thought about how quotidian vessels were crafted, but now I have participated in their very making. This is also something I made today. Oh. This looks actually quite well made. A ladle? I'm not that 
it was supposed to be some long-necked sea creature. That was indeed one of my inspirations. Really? You like it? To tell you the truth, given your unexpected arrival, I find myself quite unequipped to give you the welcome you deserve. I'm not lie, the lady looks really cool. I want to have it. <laughs> Around such an important holiday such as this, human custom will dictate that gifts should be in order. But I'm afraid this is all I can offer. If you'll have it, that is. <laughs> if you could just see a lot of the game. But I'm guessing there will also be like some hardcore fr uh, fans out there who will actually like try to replicate this. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, some like fans who are like into crafting and stuff and such usually do try to copy that. That is precisely why it would do me such a great honor if you accepted. I already can tell it would like quite a bit of work to replicate it. It has to look quite a bit intricate. You are most welcome. Happy Lantern Night. That's long the advice for Nimlet's vacation. Hmm. Approve a leave of absence request for myself. That sounds like it could easily lead to a vicious cycle of self-indulgence, something which couldn't be in further violation of protocol. Then just appoint someone else to approve your uh, absence of vacation request. But I suppose I understand her point. My proclivity to refrain from personal outings does in part originate from a sense of responsibility toward my duties. But it is also due to a lack of desire to engage in the human world. I guess it could just like... Probably Corrin would like happily take over the task and just say, okay, if you want to go for a vacation, just go. <laughs> so you can appoint like Corrin to just to like specifically do his uh, absence of vacation requests. But now I see that the human world is indeed full of many interesting places to discover. I need to take a look a bit again. Wait, where is it? Yeah, this looks rather intricate, especially like this design. But not gonna lie, this looks more like a bull than a ladle. Depending on how big you do it, you could make it a bull. Uh, already going back to Charging Village, okay. Actually, I'm gonna be right back. Gonna take a short pop from break. Oh yeah, already back. Uh <clears throat> Who are you? Why is there no voice? Um or are you a young lady? Are you the daughter of the Fayun Commons Guild manager? Strange other rumors I heard spoke of a young master. Wait, is this about a side quest? Oh, it's a world quest. Okay. Right, 
Right, because it's like not my priority. I like with the one where which like interrupted you on your way to the new area. Oh, okay. Okay, it just wants us to pretend to be from the big and common spirit. Ah, okay. I don't wanna fall after that one. Oh wait, okay. I thought like the story continues, but it just like threw me out of the quest. Ah, okay. I just thought like I was still following the <laughs> the event quest. <laughs> yeah. The workers we will do too, of course, but not now. Mm, because we actually still have like genuine story quest. We've been to so many places lately. What do you say we take a day off from adventuring and just find somewhere nice to relax? Hmm. Let Paimon think. Where are some nice places we could go? Oh, why don't we pay Cloud? Here we are, right outside our place. Do you still remember the first time we came here? We even brought offerings and everything. And when we told her that Rex Lapis had been assassinated, she immediately threatened to squash Lele Harbor. Paimon thought she'd be impossible to get along with. But now that we've spent some more time together, she's really not like that at all. We probably don't need to bring any offerings now that we've gotten to know her pretty well, right? Mm, still, Paimon's got some snacks around here somewhere, so if she really wants something, we can just use that. Huh? Traveler? Did something catch your eye? Whoa. What a pretty lady. Is she also here to visit Cloud Retainer? Okay. Are you actually expected to do this quest before the event quest? <laughs> that would also explain why they were not surprised about the, about the appearance in the, in the event quest. Okay. It also explains my confusion about me, like, uh, wondering if we actually have seen her in that human form before or not during the event quest. But if the, if you're supposed to do her character quest before the event quest, yeah, no wonder. Yeah, you're right. All it takes is one look and you can tell she's someone special. As expected of that bird lady, really. She must have a whole bunch of adept eye friends from all over the country. Okay, but... If we're both friends of Cloud Retainer, then we're basically friends by association, right? Want to go up to her and say hello? Helping you make more connections is a part of Paimon's job as your reliable guide. Paimon's got this. <laughs> um, hello. Mm. of Cloud Retainer. May we have the pleasure of learning your name, Madam Adeptus? You two... What is this tomfoolery? Has a shift in form so clouded your eyes that you no longer recognize one anymore? Wait. You're... Huh? You're the illuminated bird? But you look... human! 
Where did that happen? <laughs> well, donning human form is scarcely any test of one's abilities. As for your confusion, one merely had no reason to indulge such inclinations before. Actually, yeah, what we're gonna surprise we know that they just can like decide to be in human form whenever they want to. So uh you're indulging now because Well, one has made plans to pay a visit to some disciples at Liyue Harbor. Taking on a human form for such a trip is simply a way to make matters less conspicuous. You? Worrying about keeping a low profile? You're the one who likes to pop up out of nowhere all over the place. In fact, Paimon can think of several examples. Like last year, when you suddenly appeared on the top of a roof without any warning. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we all you're calling themselves all because they just have made a human model by the time... Uh, yeah. Before, like, not until now. Didn't we agree not to bring that up unless she asked? Oh, so you have taken care to follow the proper rules of etiquette after all. Most commendable. I don't know to ask, but face. Um. Oh, okay. Well, this is all Paimon Sky. You don't mind, right? One has never found oneself lacking in basic comforts. On the contrary, it is the gesture that one values above all else. So long as you've shown proper respect and consideration, the quantity or quality of the gift is but a trivial matter. <sighs> that kind of makes Paimon feel a little guilty for trying to keep them for herself. Anyway, where were we before you reminded Paimon about the gifts? <laughs> ah, right. So by disciples, you must mean Ganyu and Chenha. It's also been a while since we last saw them. Maybe we can come too. One plan to extend the invitation even if you had not raised the matter yourself. Shanha and Ganyu should be quite pleased to see you again. However, one would first inquire as to the reason behind your visit here. You have cause to seek one's company? Yeah, we just found ourselves missing you and wanted to see how you were doing. We were hoping you'd tell us one of your stories. Who knew we'd run into your human form while we were at it? Hmm. Is that so? If there are no urgent matters at hand, then let us make haste for Liyue Harbor. Ganyu is likely still working at Yue High Pavilion, so that shall be our first stop. Sounds great! Then let's all go to Liyue Harbor! Okay, then. <sighs> Ganyu has been quite busy with work as of late. One can count on one tell in the number of times she returns to Mount Altsong each year. Shenhe has also secured employment recently. In her correspondence with me, she wrote that she shall have no need to return for the foreseeable future. Huh. They think one was so easily mollified. One shall investigate everything with one's own eyes and decide for oneself if their living conditions are satisfactory. <laughs> She's a bit of like a um, yeah. Like a helicopter murder in that case, I guess. <laughs> but it also like actually fits the context of like Shanna having found employment. I didn't question it during the event quest, but I just thought, okay, maybe it was just mentioned by some NPCs or randomly. But no, it gets mentioned here. Oh, she would die. Pavilion. Uh, hey, do you think Ganyu will be shocked to see Cloud Retainer like this? Guess we have no idea if Shenha and Ganyu have ever seen her in this form before. Uh, wait, where did she go? Why are you just standing there, Cloud Retainer? Quietly now. One shall stay here. You two can go and meet with her. <laughs> Go together? Hmm. 
If one were to proudly proclaim one's presence, Ganyu would surely profess herself otherwise unoccupied and drop everything to attend to one's visit. One fears that would only result in her staying up all night to make up for lost time. Okay, she does have a point there. That definitely would be something Ganyu would do. One does not wish to trouble her. Conversing vicariously via you two shall suffice. Do remember to inquire as to her recent well-being. Again, do not mention one's presence here. Fair enough. Makes sense. All right, then. We'll just pass on your regards and... Cloud Retainer? Too late. Oh. oh. Busted. Is that lady... Someone you know, Ms. Ganyu. She is indeed. I'm sorry, Huixin, but could we delay the upcoming meeting for a little bit? I believe my schedule today is quite full. Although, perhaps I could move some work to later in the evening. <laughs> and she's exactly doing what Cloud Retainer uh, guessed she would do. Oh, not to worry, Ms. Ganyu. I'll make the necessary arrangements right away. Thank you, Huixin. Greetings. What brings you here today? And Cloud Retainer, too. It's been quite some time since I last saw you in this form. You are quite mistaken. One is not acquainted <laughs> with on. this Cloud Retainer of whom you speak. One is simply a mere mortal passerby. What do you think uh, this would work against Ganyu? Huh? <laughs> Seeing she's not buying it. <clears throat> that was but a simple test. One did not expect you to be able to recognize one so easily, especially after so many years of only seeing one's other form. Kenya looks totally bewildered. She's thinking, why wouldn't I recognize you? I used to see you every day. How bad do you think my memory is? <laughs> Interesting that the traveler by now starting to just like translate whatever people might be thinking <laughs> as if she could like feel read people's minds it's like not the first time this has like happened ever since like version 4.0 ever since for fontaine it seems to uh, appear to happen a lot more but recognizing you is uh my responsibility as your disciple <laughs> An apt observation. One was simply passing by while attending to some important business. One thought it would only be fitting to pay you a visit while in the area. Wait, Paima wasn't aware of any important... Oh, uh... Cloud Retainer's right! We've still got something super important to do, so we can't stay here for too long today. <laughs> oh, is that so? But it's been so long since we last saw each other. Uh, one simply desired to see you and had no intention of interrupting your work. A quick conversation should suffice for today. A more involved reunion should wait until you find yourself less occupied. I understand. That should be fine. While one acknowledges the amount of work that you have to deal with every day, one must also remind you to rest. Though Adepti blood flows through your veins, Excessive exhaustion will still cause grave harm to your body. <sighs> it still makes one nostalgic to see you as you are now, respected and independent. When you were young, you oft begged one to cuddle you to sleep when you suffered from nightmares. <laughs> Cloud Retainer, stop! You're embarrassing Ganyu in front of us. Way to go, Cloud Retainer. <laughs> if you insist. We are running short on time regardless, so one will refrain from going into each and every story. Why don't you continue your conversation? One shall simply stand by and listen. Who has come some of your recent adventures with Ganyu? Wow, you've been to so many new places since the last time we spoke. If you ever need anything, please just come find me at Yuehai Pavilion. 
Also, forgive me for my presumptuousness, Cloud Retainer, but if you plan to continue appearing in this form, don't you think it'd be helpful to adopt a human name? A human name? Huh. You raise a valid point. Considering the sheer extent of one's renown, Cloud Retainer is surely too recognizable as a name. You really think so? I, not that you're not famous or anything, but <laughs> that famous? <sighs> you presume to know the extent of one's illustrious achievements. One would hardly think such a thing to be possible. <sighs> Nevertheless, Ganyu's advice cannot be ignored. From this point on, when in public occasions, be sure to refer to one as Shenyun. Shenyun? Ah, oh, I assume that's a reference to the full record of Pristine Pavilion. An adeptus of years past would rise with the clouds and rest with the moon. They were enlightened and wise, free and unfettered. The writer referenced Master's name to describe her carefree and spontaneous nature. Oh, that sounds super cool! Paimon feels like only the most powerful of Adepti could rise with the clouds and rest with the moon. Actually, those lines were originally written to describe Cloud Retainer herself. Huh? Wait, so you're really that powerful? And what of it? Did you truly take one to be nothing more than a bird of bigger than average size? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Probably should be a bit more thoughtful about what she's saying, especially when she's in front of Cloud Retainer. To be fair, Cloud Retainer rarely speaks of her past accomplishments. The tales of her past can only be found in ancient texts. It is said that once, a long, long time ago, there was a severe drought in Liyue. Left with no choice, Many people left their homes, while others spent day and night praying to the Adepti. Actually, it's surprising that she never talks about her past achievement when she so much likes to tell stories. <laughs> it's kind of contradicting. Although I did not live through such tragedy, simply reading about it is enough to gain a visceral understanding of all the pain and desperation during that time. On top of the drought, a noxious gas also began to spread through the land. If not for Cloud Retainer's efforts, much of Liyue would be nothing more than a barren wasteland today. The books had this to say about what happened. Upon arrival, the Adeptus borrowed the wind to retain the clouds. Immediately, the clouds gathered together, and abundant rain burst forth from the heavens. Drought and plague were both driven away, and the people were saved. That's incredible! Mortal records add embellishments to dramatize past events. One did merely what one ought. And even if one had not interceded, the other adept I would surely have stepped in to help. Even so, you stopped an entire drought! Can you really control the weather like the book said? Oh, Paimon suddenly has a lot more respect for you. Uh, so it was Paimon's bad for calling you Illuminated Bird before. You're not too mad, are you? I mean, if we had no winds, we would have no weather. So wind literally is the cause of weather. <laughs> oh, how laughable. A name is but a simple label we carry with us on our journey through the world. Why would one be offended by such a trivial matter? <laughs> That's a relief. In that case, Paima will continue to call you whatever feels right in the moment. Well, that is quite enough ancient history for now. Ganyu, have you had word from Shenhe? One has heard that she procured a job recently. Have you any thoughts on her workplace? And what pray tell of her monthly remuneration? Moreover, does she find herself overly inundated with work? Is she allowed time off during Lantern Rite? That is a lot of questions. <laughs> there is no cause for concern, Cloud Retainer. I introduced Shenha to her employer personally. Wanmin Restaurant's business has been booming recently. 
So with Chef Mao being swamped with customers, and Shangling still off and out in search of new recipes, I introduced Shen He to staff the restaurant. I see. Most excellent indeed. One has had the pleasure of being introduced to that family. Shangling is kind and astute, while her father is loyal and reliable. One has no cause to believe that they will make Shen He's work difficult. <sighs> now, it is almost time to partake in the Vittles of Noon. One shall visit Wanmin Restaurant in person and see how Shen He is doing. Uh huh? But didn't you just say that you had something important to do? <laughs> uh, can that wait until after we've eaten? <laughs> you may return to your work on you. One shall see to this matter on one's own. There will be many an occasion to dine together in the future. One is certain the opportunity shall present itself most readily. Of course, Cloud Retainer. Please take care. Traveler, Paimon, I'll see you some other time. See you around, don't you? Whew. Paimon was pretty quick on the uptake there, don't you think? As soon as you mentioned important business to attend to, Paimon realized that you were just looking to cut the conversation short and not take too much of Ganyu's time. Is Paimon right? No, in fact, it was not an excuse. One is indeed visiting Liyue Harbor for an important purpose. Wait, for real? The moment is not yet upon us. Still, the truth will be revealed to you in time. Huh. She really seems to be playing up the whole mysterious Adeptus thing right now. Is it because we just heard that cool story about her powers? <laughs> Could be. You get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, how can I not? Not even fine food is enough to distract from the presence of a fine lady, eh? Oh, I'm far more interested in getting her details than ordering any dishes. Hey, how about you ask her? <laughs> you do it! No, no, no. I think you should. Wait, she's coming. I think Shenra is not the person you should try to flirt with. This can only end terribly. <laughs> what can I get for you today? Uh, greetings, miss. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if you'd be willing to... Uh... What would you like to order? <laughs> uh, two servings of more meat to go. Uh, good chat. Bye. <laughs> Shana! Welcome. It's been a while. May I take your order? Don't welcome us as guests and greet us as old friends in the same line. It's weird. <laughs> you know Shana is a bit uh, slow on the uptake when it comes to like proper conversation skills. Mm-hmm. Oh. And this is? Uh, this is Miss Qianyun. Master? Huh? Huh. One does not recall ever revealing this form to you before. How were you able to ascertain one's true identity with such ease? I've trained and lived with Master for more than ten years. I would recognize you no matter what form you take. <gasps> you... No. Is something the matter, Master? Hardly. Hardly. One simply learned of your employment from your letter and came to check on your well-being. And check out the great food, too! Indeed. It's almost lunchtime. My apologies. I'm still on the clock and can't talk for very long. <laughs> well, if it isn't the Traveler and Paimon, are you here for Shenha? The lunch rush isn't in yet, Shenha. So, I've got things covered for now. Go ahead, sit down and enjoy some time with your friends. I'll let you know if things pick up. Thank you, Chef Mao. Woohoo! Oh, she definitely got a gold boss. Let me throw, please. Thank you. It is just as one expected. 
The owner of Wanmin Restaurant is indeed a most reasonable and accommodating human. Still, the work here entails dealing with quite a varied group of people. Has this been difficult for you, Shenhe? It's been manageable so far. I sometimes run into strange people, but I have figured out a way to deal with them. I would feel like more the other peoples would have more troubles dealing with Shanha than Shanha dealing with the others, to be honest. <laughs> Seems like you've been making progress. So by dealing with them, you mean... It would be so funny with just to say kill them. First, I try to talk sense into them. If that doesn't work, I threaten them with violence. At this point, they usually decide they are in favor of a civil conversation. <laughs> of course he's threatening with violence. Oh, uh, how should Paimon put this? Oh, a sensible plan. One is gladdened to see you integrate so well into human society. And you, Master, how have you been? Simply marvelous. Though Mount Outsong has scarcely enjoyed your presence recently, one has hardly found the pleasure of one's own company to be lacking. I see. Oh, just as expected of Master. Hm. Hmm. Yep. Generally, like, Claudio Jenner is pretty hard in, like, expressing herself, same as Shana. I have missed Master quite a bit, too. Even though work has been busy lately, I've already had a conversation with Chef Mao about taking some time off soon to visit Master. Oh, you did? <clears throat> Do make note of such matters in your letters in the future. There's hardly a need to keep one in suspense. <laughs> Whoa, her mood shot up just like that. By the way, Master, since you are in Liyue Harbor, have you had the chance to visit Ganyu? Uh, indeed. She is similarly preoccupied with her work. There was time only to exchange a few simple pleasantries. Ganyu told us the story of Cloud Retainer's name. It was amazing. We never knew how powerful she was before. I see. In that case, allow me to also share a story about Master's past. Oh? <laughs> Is that a problem, Master? I believe this to be a good topic of conversation. No, not a problem. One was simply caught off guard. But no matter. Please, proceed. One is most curious to see how much of one's own conversational prowess you possess. I'm wondering what stories she is gonna like from out. <laughs> Master once participated in a race against Mooncarver. After Mooncarver lost, he insisted that Master's ability to fly gave her a natural edge in such a contest. In response, Master agreed to forego flying in return for being able to use one of her devices in the race. Mooncarver accepted, only to find Master with a brand new device on the day of the contest. This sounds even more like cheating than flying, to be honest. She probably built some kind of like... <laughs> old style race car or something, what this probably... <laughs> device was it it was a mechanical vehicle made out of iron what was it called again oh an electro powered bicycle yep that really sounds more like cheating than flying <laughs> during your race oh you refer to the bicyclical thunder flash mobile one spent 49 days conceptualizing and crafting it it need only be infused with adeptal energy, and it can cover thousands of miles in one day. Oh, it boggles the mind why Mooncarver ever supposed he might best me in a contest of locomotion. Though he sprinted with all his might, he could barely keep up. <sighs> Alas, the one flaw of my mechanism lay in its weakness against mountainous terrain. One was thwarted mere seconds from victory, when it was thrown off course and failed to make it across the final stretch. Truly a most unfortunate turn of events. Anyway, do go on, Shenha. She just saw a Master, spider story. that was the end of that story. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
Is that so? Huh. With you gone, one has seldom felt the desire to call upon those old fossils for another contest. What is a race without spectators, after all? True. Have you been lonely, Master? Lonely? Huh. At one's age, entire human generations come and go in the blink of an eye. Even one's own self-directed musings can span several days and nights. Tis a most foreign sentiment. The mere mention of it is preposterous. <laughs> mm-hmm. True. What or is the not. reason for that look upon your face? It's nothing. It's just... Uh, well, Paimon gained a lot of respect for you after listening to that story of you summoning the rain and everything. But all it took was a few words out of your mouth and it's like you're back to being that illuminated bird again. <laughs> I was just a little bit confused. Which one of the two is the real cloud retainer? To me, they are both master. One is the master that's widely revered by the people, while the other is the master that I respect and adore. Huh. One finds oneself exalted yet again with sweet words of praise and flattery of a most extravagant nature. You chose to exalt one with your words, yet you refuse to grace Mount Outsong with your presence for any extended period of time. One would almost question the sincerity of your estimations. Right, uh, she's saying that she would refuse to do so. She literally mentioned earlier that she already made plans to actually go on a vacation trip to visit her. <laughs> this is just being mean, genuine. This is not to say that your words paint an inaccurate picture. One has always lived by a single ideal. Eschew all action and abide by no rule. One does as one pleases and speaks as one pleases. Others may critique or praise as they see fit. Yet one places little weight in such judgments. She got like, what, two sentences of flattery from her disciple? And it's as if her ego is about to burst. Do you have any empty tables? Hey there, could we get another fish stew? I'm hearing more guests come in. I should get back to work. All right, good luck with the lunchtime rush, Shen, huh? Mm-hmm. I'll try my best. Are we getting lunchtime, though? Okay, we do get so One is fond of all kinds of delicacies and delights in a multitude of flavors. The dishes here demonstrate no shortage of culinary skill. Their unique flavor profile has left one more than satisfied. In fact, one has been struck by quite the fit of inspiration. One has already begun to conceptualize the next generation of supreme cuisine machines. I mean, the visual fidelity of the food could be better, but it still looks tasty even with the way it's looking and I'm actually hungry. Ugh, game is being so mean. <laughs> Everything's so tasty. A bit too hot at times, but still super tasty. Especially since stuff like dumplings and such are like especially really tasty. I'm sorry, miss, but our tables are full. Shall we try somewhere else, Granny? But it smells so delightful. Can we really not eat here? My poor legs can't go on for much longer. Mm, well, I don't really want to uh, uh, snack something since dinner time is not that far off. And... It would be taking a bit more effort to like actually make something more proper. Since I don't have like anything easily ready available to eat at the moment. Like without cooking for a bit. That's what I mean. So yeah. <laughs> and we're just gonna top it out until dinner time is in a few more hours. 
Well, you could always check with some of the other guests and see if anyone's happy to share a table. Okay, I I'll ask around. Excuse me, would you mind letting us share a table with you? There are no empty tables left, so... Ah, well, Paimon doesn't mind. What about you guys? Great! Thanks so much. My name is Shuyu, and this is my granny, Yuendai. Granny? Yep. Is there something wrong with that? No, no! Paimon's just a bit... Surprised! She looks so young! She looks like a grandma, yeah. though. A lot of people compliment Granny on her youthful looks, but she's actually much older than she appears. <sighs> Granny? Why don't you take a seat? Come on, it's not polite to stare. Huh. Have we met before? No. Tis a fated meeting, then. Please, take a seat. What would huh. you like to eat, Granny? Weird. I can order for you. I want... braised earthworms. They always pop up out of the ground after a rainstorm. Um... <sighs> no, no, not this again. Granny, there's no braised earthworms on the menu. Um, okay. <laughs> braised earthworms? Well, that sounds weird. Do people actually eat that? It's also a bit weird to ask to order that. <laughs> right, that's what Paimon was thinking too. I'm curious what it will taste I... like. Need any help? Help? Oh, do you mean with Granny? Thanks, that's nice of you to offer. Granny has pretty bad dementia, so her memory is getting worse all the time. She's always saying things that sound kind of confusing. Actually, her memory's been bad ever since I was little. But it's gotten so bad lately that I even have to remind her who I am every morning. That's quite tough. They died young. It's just me and Granny now. Oh, um... Uh, but it's okay. Don't feel bad. Granny loves me a lot, and I love her a lot too. Sure, it's hard at times, but you just gotta make the best of the life you've got. Wow, you're really tough for your age, kid. <laughs> you're too kind. And me? Oh, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> you're tough too, Granny. Plus, you're really gentle, and you're always there for me. Definitely fishing for compliments there. <laughs> yes. And it's hardly as if I forget everything. I still remember the important things. Uh, wait, what was that really important thing again? I guess she does not ah, remember. I remember now. It was a dream. I had a dream where everything was dark. Someone was standing in front of me. She told me to come and find her, and that once I'd found her, I would be free. Huh? That sounds super important. But how come you've never told me about it before? It was just a dream, so I forgot about it. But I'm in a good mood now, and somehow I remembered it again. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, I believe I've had this dream a great many times. But just how many times have I had it? Now that, I do not remember. Wait, so you have a reoccurring dream where someone's talking to you? That sounds spooky. Oh, does that mean you're possessed? <laughs> Come on, Taimon. Unlikely. Her eyes are clear and her breathing remains calm and level. One sees no signs of possession. Are you sure? Who do you take me for? Is one not an adept? Is, hmm, am I not an expert? Huh, you're right. Paimon almost forgot you're the expert. In that case, do you still remember? 
remember what the person in your dreams looked like, Granny? Not anymore. Although, I have a sense that she looked rather like me. But not as I am now, my younger self. <laughs> a younger version of Granny? This is just getting weirder and weirder. What is going on here? As one said, fate must have brought us together. You may leave the situation to me. Are you sure? Um, so, what are your names? Paimon's Paimon. Paimon. Just Shen Yun is fine. Thank you all so much for offering to help. But first, I'm sorry for asking, but, um... How do you want us to pay you back? Oh, we don't need any payment for this. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, but Miss Shenyun, what exactly can we do to help out this granny? All we have to go off is that dream. Where do we start? That is elementary. Since her dreams portray her younger self, then we shall retrace the steps of her youth. Once we have revisited those places, her memories will likely return. Hmm, sounds like a plan. So, Granny, do you remember which places you went to when you were young? Why, of course I do. The heavens above, the earth below, the wispy clouds, and the emerald mountain streams. That's pretty vague. No. I might have an idea. Once when I was really little, my dad told me that Granny used to be a martial artist heroine who saved loads of people from a disaster. If it's true, then maybe they wrote about it in the history books or something. A martial arts heroine? Hmm. Shincho knows tons about Liwa's chivalric traditions. If anyone knows about the heroes of the past, it's him. Let's go find him at the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Are you leaving already? But I'm still hungry. I just wanted to say, let him eat our lunch first. <laughs> That's why they came here for in the first place. I'll go order some food, Granny. If there's nothing on the menu you especially want, I'll just get a few different things. It seems we must part ways for now. The Traveler and Paimon are bound for the Feiyun Commerce Guild, while you and I and Shuyu shall remain here and partake of their lunch. As for myself, I have matters to discuss with Streetward Rambler. Streetward Rambler? Oh, you mean Madame Ping! Precisely. Let us meet at Yujing Terrace once you are ready. Okay. Why are there always people in the way there? Scatter! A bit annoying. Uh, I should get paid in another few days. Shall we take the opportunity to go out and have some fun? Sure. Okay. Where is Sinkshow? Sure. It's you two. What brings you here? Shincho! Great, we found you! We wanted to ask you about something. I explained the situation to Shincho. Hmm. That's not a whole lot of information to go off of. I don't know if I can say for sure. I can't pinpoint her identity from your description alone, but... Considering her age, I am reminded of a nameless heroine who's been featured in various chivalric novels. Nameless heroine? 
That's right. The novels often speak of a great drought from 50 years ago. As the people suffered, a nameless heroine appeared and began to clear away evil spirits and bandit camps. The people idolized her, but never learned her name. Uh, okay, I already see the connection to uh, Xian Yun, to all of this. Okay. Okay. All they knew was that she always acted alone. Later, though, she supposedly fell in love with a similarly noble-minded exorcist from Mount Tianhang. They were well matched in more ways than one, often fighting together as a fearsome duo of otherworldly strength. After the drought ended, the heroine and the exorcist left the public eye and began living a reclusive life in the mountains. All that remained were tales of her incredible accomplishments. The way this nameless heroine faded from fame into obscurity later in life is not too dissimilar from Miss Yuendai. I hope that's somewhat helpful. Thanks a lot, Xingqiu. We knew it'd be worth talking to you. It's nothing at all. Just something I came across while reading. I did do a bit of extra research on her story, but it was just out of personal curiosity. Well, Paimon still thinks that's super cool. Oh, wait, Xingqiu, if you read up on her, do you know of any places often associated with her? Let me think. In the novels, the nameless heroine always appeared near one of three places. Wangshu Inn, the area just north of Jue Yun Karst, and Qingyun Peak. Perhaps the real-life heroine who inspired the character was also often seen near those three places. That would explain why those locations appear in the various novels written about her. That's a good lead for us. <laughs> You're welcome. To be honest, I found some parts of the story confusing when I first came across it. If Miss Yuendai was indeed the original inspiration for the character, she may just be able to help me put the pieces together. It's rare for a chivalric hero to fade into obscurity during their lifetime, even after retiring from the public eye. But no one ever saw or heard from the nameless heroine again. There were even rumors that she became extremely ill. I've never understood why someone would go to such lengths to erase themselves from public memory. It's almost as if she was trying to hide from something. There's probably far more to the story than what's been written. We'll be sure to tell you if we manage to uncover the truth. That's a deal. Perhaps, behind the truth of it all, there lies a story more fantastical than any work of fiction. Paimon feels like we just learned so much from Shinkyo. A drought, a nameless heroine, a life of seclusion. Uh, wait, why does the story sound super familiar? That's Cloud Retainer. <laughs> oh, right. There's a drought in this story, too. Um, Shinkyo, are droughts super common in Liyue or something? Well, they used to be. But people have long since developed methods to prevent them. Like by cultivating the soil or digging canals. So while droughts do happen from time to time, they are rarely regarded as true disasters. The drought 50 years ago is probably one of the worst we've had in the last several centuries. The crops withered, the streams ran dry, and the monsters in the mountains became rabid and agitated. Countless caravans were attacked, and people who lost their homes came together to form bandit groups. What started as a natural disaster soon became a human tragedy as well. That sounds awful. Yeah, and that's exactly why the nameless heroine was so beloved. She must have been someone of true integrity to do so much for the people while asking nothing in return. Still, as terrible as that drought was, it was nothing compared to the truly calamitous disasters that befell this land in ancient times. They say that back in those days, Disasters were both more severe and more common. Only the strongest of Adepti could hope to dispel the ruin and devastation. Hmm. Do you have any other questions? We're good for now. We're just going to head back and meet up with Miss Hyunyun and the others again. Is this referring to, like, maybe to the stuff that happened, like, 500 years ago? With, like, uh, 
like the fall of Kanria. Maybe. Paimon hopes that Granny Yu and I will be able to remember more of her past. She used to be a great hero who saved many people. So sad that she can't recall any of it. Anyway, we'll be off now. See you some other time, Xingqiu. Thank you so much for your help. It's no problem at all. Safe travels. Okay. Uh, all the way up there. Okay. Got her. The wind rises. Yeah. Skyward. Scatter. That's a really nice photo to get through, Rosa. I have recorded the tune that you requested. I hope it will be of help to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Straight word, but... Ping, what has amused you so? Oh, it's no serious matter. I was just reminiscing about the last time I saw you in this form. Time has wrought such change in this world, and yet you appear just the same as ever. Time has little bearing on one's existence. Nor has one keenly felt its effects whilst dwelling at Mount Outsong. Nevertheless, Ping, one would like to seek your counsel on a personal matter. Oh, why so formal all of a sudden? I must say, you're making me a little nervous. What is it? Well, the inquiry is as such. A approximately how much Mora would one need to afford a comfortable life in the harbor, not unlike the one that you yourself lead. Yeah, she wants to move to the harbor. Interesting. Hmm. It does not require as much as you may think. Still, do you mean that... Cloud Retainer, Madam Ping! Uh, what are you two talking about? <clears throat> Nothing save for some trivial matters. <sighs> Have you unearthed any useful details? Shinjo has a theory, but let's save it for when Chu Yu and Miss Yundai have joined up with us again. Chu and Yundai were soon as seen, Pemon relays Shinjo's theory. Do not be troubled, young lady. Here, have some tea. Uh, thank you so much. What do you think, Shuyu? Does it match up with what you know of your granny? Huh. According to the story, the nameless heroine eventually fell in love with an exorcist from Mount Tianhun. Maybe... That's my grandpa. I don't have many memories of him. But there is this one time, I found a box in our attic full of a bunch of weird sigils. I think so too. Granny might remember something once she's returned to a familiar place. What marvelous tea. I can taste the dew's sweetness in this cup. It's as if I was taking a stroll in the mountains, thoroughly one with nature and at peace. Is that so? Then please drink as much as you like. There's no need to hurry. At our age, it's always nice to slow down and take the time to appreciate pleasant conversation among friends. <laughs> Thank you. Talk of the old people, I guess. Okay, since we have the time, can I ask you something? Sure thing. What would you like to know? Um, I have a secret I want to tell you. Let's go talk over there. Oh, secret. Squall Fury. Wait, that doesn't want to do that. Hey. That's what I wanted. <laughs> What's wrong, Shuyu? Well, I've been kind of meaning to ask ever since we started talking in the restaurant, but. Are you guys all... Adepti in disguise? 
Well, one is. <laughs> Why well, we are actually the center in disguise, I guess. <laughs> well, you guys just seem super special. Plus, I think I might have heard Miss Shen Yun call herself an adeptus. <sighs> Must have been a slip of the tongue. Shen Yun, since you were the one who uh, misspoke, maybe you can explain to Shu Yu here what you really meant by that. <sighs> One is indeed an adeptus. Is that of some concern to you? She just casually reads it. I knew it. Well, one time when I was a little kid, I saw a pure white illuminated crate. I had this super high fever, and Granny wasn't around. I was feeling all icky and gross. But then this snowy white crane flew down from the sky. She put me on her back and flew me to her cool adeptus house and fed me some sort of magic potion. When I woke up, I was already back in my bed and my fever was gone. Oh. I really wanted to thank her, but I was too sleepy to stay awake, so I never got the chance. So I just kind of wanted to ask if maybe any of you have ever met an adeptus like that? She's standing right in front a of you. Pure white illuminated crane? The only two we've ever met are blue and white and black and brown. Have you ever met one that's pure white, Clavertina? Hmm. Never has one met an adeptus with such features. One surmises such a description is but a hyperbolic embellishment that oft results from narrative accounts. That's weird. Was it really just a dream then? Well, even if it was just in my head, it doesn't matter that much anyway. All I really want is to help Granny recover her memories. I'm really grateful for all your help. Leave it to us! Now that we know the three locations, we just need to visit them one by one! Let's go to Wang Shu Lin first! Okay, I'll go get Granny. Okay. I want to tell about it. Thank you very much. Oh, we're literally loading right into the cutscene. Wang Shu in. Wang Shu in. Do you remember this place, Granny? Yes. The fish here is very delicious. And if you look out into the distance, you can always spot a bird that's been left behind by its flock. Uh. I believe I used to have a room here. It had a window. Yes, yes, I spent a lot of time looking out that window. Which room was it again? Uh, let me look. Thank you for the follow, uh, Bad Fondy Moo. It looks like Richard is uh, for some reason not working. <laughs> it also killed my uh, follow up girl bar, actually. But yeah. I'll maybe have to look on what Twitch has has for some problems with like alerts and such. I can win. Hyman's still having some trouble understanding what she's talking about, but if she's so familiar with this place, that must mean she lived here, right? Wait, huh? <laughs> I sensed a non-human presence and decided to come take a look. If you're here, then there's likely no trouble afoot. I suppose there's no cause for concern. It's been a while, Cloud Retainer. I see you have returned to your previous form. I have indeed. 
I fought alongside her in this form on many occasions during the Archon War. Oh, wow! What was she like during the war? Oh, wait, let Paimon take a guess. Was it anything like this? Behold, the glory of one... Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Hands up and surrender, <laughs> or be prepared to face the full might of the Adepti! Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, a good mimicking of Lord Retainer, I guess. At least quite a funny one. An impressive imitation. <laughs> <laughs> Paimon knows her all too well. Even so. Cloud Retainer was not always as ostentatious as you describe. You may be unaware, but her talent with Adepti Sigils is just as formidable as her skill in mechanics. The Archon War reached its peak after Guizhong's death. The Cloud Retainer who fought beside me in those devastating battles was taciturn and solemn, only speaking when she had to activate her sigils. A Cloud Retainer who barely talks? Paimon can't picture it. But what happened after that? If you were so powerful in your human form, why did you decide to take up your bird form again? Once one had bid farewell to the world of mortals, what use would one still have for such a shape? When dwelling between mountain and forest, away from the struggles and troubles of the mortal world, a mortal form is hardly the most fitting of choices. After the war, Cloud Retainer retired to Mount Outsong only revealing herself to the occasional visitor, and always in her avian form. Although I do believe there was an occasion some 30-odd years ago when she decided to don her human form. I believe it was for the purpose of... It one believes there is little need to relive bygone matters. Granny, are you okay? Uh... Back then, at this place, I... Perhaps this conversation should end here. I shall take my leave now. Should you encounter any trouble, you need only call my name. However, given that you are traveling with Cloud Retainer, I trust you are in good hands. Everyone! I, I think Granny is finally beginning to remember her past! Slowly now, calm your mind and recount what has been recalled. A long time ago, I stayed here to recuperate from my illness. Huh. So what Shinjo said was true! You did fall ill! Was that why you went into hiding? Hmm. I don't remember. I'm very sorry, but, but I can't even remember the name of my illness. The only thing I can remember is that it took a great toll on me, and there was no cure for it. Well, apparently there was, otherwise you wouldn't be here right now. I was confined to my room in Wangshu Inn, where I spent many days unconscious. I'd come to every once in a while and stare at the migrating birds outside the window. It was a solemn sight. I remember crying. But I'm not even sure I knew why. But I feel like I'm already like piecing together the story which I want to tell you, and what the what all the connections to genuine are. One day I met a traveling merchant. Upon hearing of my illness, he sold me a bottle of soul revitalizing tea pills. He told me that the pills were concocted using Adepti blood and could be used to alleviate my symptoms. Sure enough, I made a full recovery. My illness remained dormant for several decades after that. Wait, but if your illness remained dormant for several decades, are you saying that what you're going through now is just a relapse of what happened all those years ago? And it was all thanks to the pills that you managed to keep the symptoms in check? Uh, Paimon's brain kinda hurts. Do you remember anything else? I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, oh, 
If only I wasn't so useless. Hey, you're not useless. You've done so much for me. Watched me grow up. Raised me. How could you say that about yourself? Oh, fret not, dear child. Granny was just a bit frustrated. That's all. Actually, I, I can yeah, say what I think where is maybe going. My guess what is going what is going on is that like um unbeknownst to Yuenda, she fought along with like, Cloud Retainer to like repel stuff during the Torot. That's why we heard this um the Torot story from Ganyu. Then she came back to her to give her like a bit uh yeah, a cue for the illness, like out of respect or maybe um yeah yeah out of respect for them having fought alongside each other and also came back around to giving a cue for uh show you here so she's i'm guessing maybe also got the same illness and helped her out because of that that's like my current guess right now where this is going. The recovery of a person's memories is a gradual process. Finding pieces of one's past is always superior to not finding anything at all. Let us make haste to the next location. Next location. Next location. Oh, why don't we go to the area north of Dweyunkars next? There isn't really a landmark there, so where should we start? Oh, Paimon's got it. Let's check out the houses in the area first. Also, I'm guessing the time span where she was recovering from her illness was 30 years ago. As, like, Zhao mentioned it. It's like, once you, like, pick up um, all the minor details characters are saying in these, in these quests, you can figure out the story quite easily. Because Genshin often plays um, with the concept of Chikorov's gun. But I also uh, I don't know um, what like, the concept of Chikorov's gun uh, means. Whenever you play um, something like a detail, a story, you always have to eventually make use of it. Like, say as an example, you just mention that they are like they're slaying a gun on the table some chapters earlier for example in the book then you actually have to make use of that gun and actually make it part of the story that's like this concept of Jack Rose gun like no place detail is like irrelevant She would have stayed somewhere, right? Oh, Paimon's really got her thinking cap on today. At this rate, we'll recover all of Granny Wendy's memories in no time. In the case of the, like, the gun example, you say it's lying on a desk somewhere, then a few chapters later, then someone is shooting with the gun. That's what, like, making it part of the story. Um... That's probably is like the best party for Tarosa. Uh, I guess I will be able to Whoa, find them.
Wait, last one? Wait, am I stupid? Why did I like immediately forget the button for switching arenas for? How did I forget it right now? <laughs> uh, I feel really stupid right now to forgetting what I, what the button for that was. Especially since I literally just used it the moment before that. <laughs> what the fuck is going on with my brain right now? Mm. not seeing what that was. Okay, now it works. Okay. For some reason it didn't want to work. Okay, the button impulse just didn't work as it should have been. Just a button input didn't work. Okay. For some reason. That's why it also made me so confused. <laughs> because I was pressing the right button, it just didn't do it. Let me think. I feel like I've been here before. But I don't think I stayed here too long. I might have just rested here briefly before continuing on my way. Got it. That's okay. There are still plenty of other places we can check. Wait a second. If I remember correctly, I believe I brought... Ah, yes. I brought some sweet snacks with me. Go on. Take some. You need to eat a lot if you want to grow big and strong. Oh, thank you. Then Paimon will help herself. <laughs> yeah, skyward, scatter. <sighs> okay. Did you remember something, Granny? I... I remember. Show you. This... is where your father was born. It was a moonless night. I had been injured, so your grandpa was supporting me. We fled together with some being in the fog behind us in hot pursuit. I had exhausted my strength when the labor pains came on. 
so we took refuge in this house. Your grandpa set up a barrier outside, but neither of us knew if it could hold the monsters back. I remember that night. I remember falling to my knees, reciting a prayer over and over. I alone am the source of this sin. Punish me as you wish for forsaking my oath, but spare my innocent child. Sin? Oath? Did you do something wrong? I don't know. I don't remember. I only remember praying in the darkness with all my strength until the sun finally rose again and the fog cleared out. Eventually, the house was filled with the sound of my baby's first cries. That baby was your father. And I remember I clutched him tight to my chest and wept tears of joy. It was the first time I'd ever felt such happiness in my life. This post looks very weird when there's no actual baby on the arm. My dad? He was my pride and joy. And so are you, Shuyu. You're so much like him, and I love you both so much. But you're... Always going to be different from me. I... Why? Just... What did I do? I don't care what you might have done, Granny. You'll always be the person I love more than anything. You're too sweet, Shuyu. I'm lucky to have you with me. If not for you, I would not have had the courage to come here. To try to remember what I had forgotten. All right. Let's not stand around any longer. There's one place left, yes? Let's go take a look. If one recalls correctly, the next place should be Chinyu Peak. You and I, how fares your health? I may be a bit slow, but I'll do my best to keep up. I'm sorry to keep everyone waiting. Climb on. I shall carry you to the top. Oh, such lightness of weight. <laughs> All those who grow old grow frail in the end, do they not? First, you lose your memory, then your health. Eventually, you end up losing everything. My is that only popcorn? wish is to depart this world with a lucid mind. To free myself of this torment and the burden it places upon others. Fred, not you have my aid in this endeavor. It's like actually like cooking popcorn in the idol animation. <laughs> it looks like popcorn. <laughs> I want to see it again. <clears throat> okay, she's doing a different idol animation this time. Hmm. Finally here. Does this place feel familiar to you, Granny One Day? Let me see. How strange. Have I lived here before? When we were at Wangshu Inn and the abandoned house earlier, though I couldn't remember everything, I still felt a sense of familiarity. I could easily picture myself in those places. But here, I don't have that feeling. Uh, perhaps I did come here in the past, but it just didn't leave a strong impression on me. But did the stories get it wrong then? Yeah, that's true. But they're also the only thing we have to go off of. Paimon was hoping this place would jog Granny Uendai's memory just like the others. I'm sorry to disappoint you two. 
It's all right. We're not going to give up yet. We'll figure something else out. Just you wait. Thank you. If only I could remember. Huh? You're the wolf hauling. That way. What's that mountain? Oh, let Paimon look! Huh? Isn't that Mount Outsa? Looks like we've come full circle. Mount Outsong. Mount Outsong. Granny, are you okay? Don't push yourself, Granny. It's okay if you can't remember. You shouldn't do something that makes you sad. Mount Outsong, I... What am I really? Mount Outsong holds some familiarity to you? It does, but I... I can't go back. Are you feeling unwell? My head... It feels all heavy and dizzy. I... Just... What is wrong with me? Clem... Miss Xianyun, is there anything you can do? Let us go to Mount Outsong. But... Fret not, all will be well. You and I, you have already given more than enough to the pursuit of this endeavor. You may leave the rest to me. I've prepared something that can aid you in suppressing the fear in your heart and restoring your lost memories. It currently resides at Mount Outsong. Looks like it will come for Xian Yun actually knew the whole time what's going on. If she like, if she's like that prepared. Yeah. Wait, really? When did you do that? <laughs> I never leave anything to chance. All will reveal itself when we arrive. Skyward! I think it or like always when we go like from Mount Aosang or to Mount Aosang, they always like make this extra incurrence for it. Come on, just tell Paimon already! What's this thing you've prepared? Here, this is it. Textbook example for Jack Ross gun. We have seen this contraption the uh, time in the very first scene of this character quest. Prime example of Chekhov's gun. Huh? But isn't this the mechanism that you were tinkering with when we first got here? Oh, is it another invention of yours? Precisely. A recent one at that. I am most pleased with the result. I call it the Suspensus Somnium Mechanism. It periodically releases a soft breeze, which when paired with a gentle adeptal tune, can help the listener subconsciously relax and even enter a semi-hypnotic state. Soothing agitation and anxiety, relieving exhaustion and insomnia, its potential uses are numerous indeed. And of course, it can also aid in the recovery of lost memories. Oh, what a cool gadget! But if you had it all along, why did you keep it to yourself until just now? We could have come to Mount Outsong right off the bat and saved time on a lot of floating. How preposterous. Had you and I not recalled much of her past through her own efforts, the device would have nothing to draw upon. We Adepti can only help those who first resolve to help themselves. Had she lacked such determination and strength of character, one would have little to offer in way of assistance. Thinks she gets it now. Uh, hey, what's that other thing? As previously mentioned, a gentle adeptal tune is required to take full advantage of the mechanism. One secured such a tune from Streetward Rambler. Only with her melodies can the mechanism reach its peak power. And also, she said um, she said she was on the important mission, and actually. 
reasserted um, that fault of it being an of her being an important mission when Paimon denied it as she was thought it was just like why lie to gun you earlier. But no. So yeah. She knew the entire time what was going on. Oh, Paimon can feel what you mean. Paimon's body feels light as a feather. It's as if she's lying down on a warm patch of grass after a super satisfying meal. And you, you and I, is the mechanism helping you to relax? <sighs> she's already off. It appears she has already succumbed to the depths of reverie. Come, join one on this side. We shall give her some time to herself. The drought is over. But why do you look like you want to cry? The potion. It's nearly run its course. I've never regretted meeting you. Not even for a second. Please. Please, no. Have you forgotten? This is the world you left behind. One of gentle breeze and morning dew. Perfectly straddled betwixt the realms of heaven and earth. What is lying? How it was delivered? Have you forgotten? It immediately reminded me of um, of Lavenza from Persona 5. Like the town and how like the line was delivered. Sounded like one to one, like how Lavenza speaks in Persona 5. <laughs> Could it be that it's the same voice actor? This is your home. This is where you belong. You should have never left. The you of the past, the me from not that long ago. We should have never. Uh, uh. So that is the truth. No wonder this place is so familiar. I... Granny! Granny, are you okay? Cloud Retainer. Hmm. Your memories have returned. Wait, did you just call her by her full name? Does that mean... You already knew each other? Yes. I now remember everything. Everything. Granny, please don't cry. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, don't worry, my dear child. Granny is fine. I'm so sorry, everyone. You've gone to so much trouble on my behalf. It's all come back to me now. The most important thing that I had forgotten was the truth of what I once was. <sighs> One can sense the guilt that now plagues your conscience. Reclaiming a truth long buried is sure to come with a myriad of complex emotions. Perhaps one should recount the story on your behalf while you compose yourself. No, it's okay. Now that I've remembered, I must face my memories head on. Shuyu, everyone, I cannot thank you enough for all your help. I'm ready to tell you my story, if you're willing to listen. Please, Granny, don't force yourself. What happened in the past doesn't matter. I love you more than anything. Nothing you say can change that. I know, dear child. My feelings for you are exactly the same. It is for this reason that you deserve to know the truth. 
some time ago, I made a terrible mistake. One for which I could never atone. Is this the sin that you mentioned in Joyun Karst? What happened? I am, in truth, not a human being. My real form, one that I held for centuries, was that of a wild crane. I like this shot. She's talking about her being a white crane. You have a white crane fly into the screen. Such a nice subtle detail. I spent many, many years living on Mount Outsong, bathing in the soft breeze and drinking the sweet dew of the mountains. At some point, I somehow gained wisdom and sentience. The Lord of the Mountain, Cloud Retainer, became aware of my existence and began to share many stories with me. She even passed on the secret of cultivation to me. Though she never took me on as a formal disciple, I always saw her as my master. Whenever she took out her tools to work on mechanisms or new inventions, I would also stand next to her and watch. I even contemplated completing my training and becoming an adeptus in my own right. I followed her teachings, and time gradually passed us by. Until that fateful day, fifty years ago. Fifty years ago? I was the sound distorted there for a moment. I'm not sure if it was her history. But yeah. At least I had a like a short like distortion. That's right. Master regaled me with many stories of her past deeds. From them I learned how she had saved people from a similar crisis in the past. She was the one I looked up to the most. More than anything, I dreamt of becoming an adeptus like her. I wanted to travel the land like she had, relieving suffering wherever I went. But I was still far from being a real adeptus. I possessed no ability to take on human form and fit in with the crowd. Once she learned of my desires, Master prepared a special dose of human mimicry potion for me. She warned me that the potion's effects would only last ten years, and if I were to fail to return to my original form at the end of that time, I would forever forget my past as a crane, and become something neither human, beast, nor adeptus. Oh no, so that was the source of your dementia all along. Was it because of Grandpa? Indeed. I fell in love. Though he was human, he had spent his entire life training on Mount Tianhang. When we met, it was not only my first foray into the world below, but his as well. Although clumsy and impulsive as he was, you'd think he was the real strange bird among the two of us. But still, just like me, he cared deeply about the world and wanted, more than anything, to cleanse it of all pain and suffering. I could not help but fall for him. But my time continued to tick away. Those ten years passed by in a flash. Yet, I did not want to leave his side, so I... I... Oh no, what happened next? I committed an offense. I wanted to stay with him, even if it meant living a life full of pain and suffering. Even if it meant that I would eventually turn into a monstrosity. I knew I had betrayed Master's hopes. But I was too ashamed to face her. So I wrote her a long letter instead and asked someone to leave it outside her abode. I was convinced that she would not support my decision, and I lacked the courage to speak to her face to face. In my shame, I fled and tried to hide from the world, such that no one would be able to find me again. But that was only the beginning of my troubles. I began to suffer from a strange illness. My memories became hazy and confused, and I could no longer keep myself awake. 
I understood that my pain was caused by my refusal to return to the life I was fated to lead. Along with my memories as a crane, I soon forgot the true cause of my suffering as well. I knew only that I had committed a sin. All I could do was pray for forgiveness, even if I had long forgotten what needed to be forgiven. Looking back, I was beyond lucky to have come across that traveling merchant at Wangshu Inn. It was such a fortunate coincidence that we were there at the same time. If it weren't for those soul-revitalizing tea pills, I probably would have... <sighs> Granny! What's wrong? Coincidence? Why did I ever think it was a coincidence? Tea pills concocted using the blood of an adeptus? No, it couldn't be. Master, don't tell me. Back then, that merchant was actually... <sighs> Human custom would dictate the conferral of gifts to be in order when one's progeny is wedded, would it not? Consider the pills a symbol of one's best wishes. Was right about that prediction of the part of the story. <sighs> so when I tried to conceal my name and mistakes from the world and hide myself away in perpetuity, the only person I managed to deceive was myself. You knew where I was all along. And I may have gotten like there's like her motivation gone uh, uh, wrong and um, the reason for the meeting. And so like she like plays out some of the way I predicted. <laughs> I have not, not been that far off with my guess. One still remembers when you were but a fledgling. You possessed a certain fondness for a particular game. You would hide yourself among a group of wild cranes and ask one to pick you out from among the flock. One found you with such ease every time. Tis the truth most evident. One always recognizes one's own, no matter what form they may take. And that's why she has been playing that game of Shenha and Ganyu? Wait, wait, wait! Paimon's confused! So, Cloud Retainer, you found you and I again? But how? When? And what happened after that? <sighs> Perhaps it is now time for one to recount the rest of the tale. Are we getting an enemy to cutscene again? Oh no, okay, we, we get a uh, dungeon of a kind, I guess. One was furious upon receiving your letter. Seized with anger, one set out to bring you to your senses. truth, one had more than a few misgivings about your chosen partner. As an exorcist, his talent was lacking. One could hardly say his skill with sigils was any better. But soon, one came to appreciate the devotion he bestowed upon you during your illness. He never uttered a complaint and rarely left your side. Unwilling to begrudge someone of such character, one decided to overlook his aforementioned deficiencies, glaring though they may have been. Wishing to grant you a life without regrets, one gathered many divine ingredients and used one's own blood to create a form of medicine. Though imperfect, it managed to suppress the more dire effects of your illness. As for how to deliver the medicine, after much contemplation, one eventually decided to perform the deed oneself. I like the fake beard you can obviously see here. <laughs> one took great care to alter one's features <laughs> and select the appropriate attire. 
Only after meticulous scrutiny did one finally set out for Wang Shu Ing. <laughs> okay, and now it looks really silly. <laughs> As one expected, you were most ignorant of one's true identity. You showed not even the slightest inkling of recognition. <sighs> one was quite torn. Should one have celebrated the success of one's disguise, or mourn the loss of your acquaintance? Nevertheless, Perhaps. one would speak to you about another matter, if you are amenable, even <laughs> Oh, now it cut off that line. Somehow the game today is not like fully recognizing every like button press I'm doing. Not sure what's the issue with it today. She's not doing that much damage when she's just fighting on her own. <sighs> Those monsters would hardly have pursued you with such ferocity without sufficient incentive. They were likely incited by the presence of godly remains. Said godly remains, in turn, were likely drawn to the trace of one scent on your body. Wan was, after all, an active participant in the Archon War. Some of the gods were likely shattered by contraptions of one's very making. In the end, Wan was relieved to see you endure through the night. At the break of dawn, Wan heard an infant's cry pierce through the air. And Wan saw you carefully cradle the child to your chest. Although certain mortal matters remain foreign to me, one could not help but be moved by your joy. I'm curious about the technicalities of a human and like a crane having a kid together. Is she and Yuan's potion that powerful to actually like make one into like a proper human? So that's the thing that can happen. It just sounds kind of weird, but okay. To see you happy, that was more than enough. <laughs> Though, the gene pool and below by the biology side of this. The stuff should not work out, but hey. Now you should have a complete understanding of the events. Wait, but if that's true, then the crane who took care of me when I was sick must also be... Ah, one had almost neglected to recount the absurdities of that tale. Yeah. 
Just as you and I troubled one with her antics, so did you give one many a headache. <laughs> Upon finding you burning with fever, one made plans to bring you back to one's abode for treatment. However, upon seeing one's form, you began to cry, refusing to get on one's back. When one asked you why, <laughs> apparently you believed that one could not possibly be a true Adeptus, because all illuminated cranes are white from tip to toe. Me. <laughs> one had no choice but to apply powder to one's body to conceal the variegated nature of one's appearance. You became more than amenable enough when one stood before you devoid of any other coloring. It bears mentioning, however, that as a crane, you and I was nearly entirely pure white in color. Though you had never encountered her in that form, you still recognize the essence of her being. Perhaps fate brought you two together in more ways than one. I was also right, I was also right with that, guess. Pretty much had all. Now all has been revealed. <sighs> One owes you an apology, you and I. One recognized you upon your very entrance into Wan Nin restaurant. One has always viewed you as a disciple of equal standing with Ganyu and Shenhe. Indeed, one wished to bring your story to a satisfactory end with this visit to Liyue Harbor. Still, one could not reveal your identity right away. Had one simply informed you of all you had lost, all those cherished memories would merely have become the fictionalized account of another. Memories are most meaningful when recalled by those who lived through them. Would you not agree? Even if the process was painful and arduous to experience. <sighs> Have you any further inquiries? Master, I... I must ask. If you found me all those years ago, why did you leave me be, even though you knew about my mistake? Why did you not bring me back to Mount Outsong by force? One has never regarded your action as a mistake. It was a simple choice, nothing more. When it is time for one's progeny to leave the nest, it is the responsibility of an elder to let them fly free. Yet, when your wings grow weary and the night grows dark, just know that you always have a place to which to return. Tis a refuge referred to by many a name in mortal writing. Home, nest, haven. Whatever its denomination may be, its essence remains quite unchanged. Rough that. Hmm. One speaks, of course, of a place not unlike one's own abode. One's disciples are free to come and go as they wish. Yet the door remains forever open to those who wish to return. One rather hopes you count yourself among them. Thank you. I just... Thank you so much. Hmm. You and I. One expects you too have sensed the rapid deterioration of your condition as of late. Have you not? Forty years ago, you chose a path without a future. Though one used one's own blood to provide you with a few decades of extra time, it nearly delayed the inevitable. One may have extended the path, yet one was unable to alter its final destination. <sighs> Even the power of an Adeptus has its limits. Had your condition continued to deteriorate, you would have forgotten your life as a human entirely. In the end, you would have turned into a creature lacking in the ability to even comprehend its own monstrousness. Fortunately, you were able to avoid that scenario by reclaiming your memories. Though one sped the process along by providing some guidance, the result is entirely a reflection of your own effort. I was just like thinking about... But also explains why she wanted to eat her from that one green restaurant. <laughs> she was a crane in past. 
cranes usually do eat. Earthworms, I guess. So, what's gonna happen to Granny? At least a Genshin. One will help her reclaim her original form as a wild crane. If it be fated, she may recover her sentience one day. She's gotta go back to being a regular crane, huh? Master, you've already done more than enough for me. I don't know how I could possibly repay your kindness. This is a better result than I could have ever hoped for. How much time do I have left? <sighs> hmm. Not long. The transformation is imminent. Granny, please don't leave, okay? You're all I have left. Please. Don't be sad, dear child. Granny has led a wonderful life. My only regret is having to leave you behind. Don't forget to eat well, okay? A growing young lady like yourself needs lots of good food to grow big and strong. Promise Granny you'll take good care of yourself when I'm gone. I promise, Granny. I'll do whatever you say. Good girl. Good girl. Don't worry. It's not goodbye forever. Granny's gonna become the most formidable crane in all of Mount Outsung. Granny will train day and night. I won't stop until I can turn into a human without having to rely on anything but my own power. When that day comes, we'll be able to live together again. You and I. How's that sound? Good. That's a good girl. Even though we won't see each other for a little while, as long as we both work hard, we're sure to meet again someday. Uh, I'll eat well, Granny. I promise. And I'll wait for you, no matter how long it takes. I'll wait for you to come back. That's a good girl. Then Granny really has no more regrets. No. I'm so sorry, Master. Thank you for everything. Interesting how the frog jumps into her in the transformation is beginning. <laughs> Let her be. At her age, crying is a natural, if not fitting, response to such an event. Tears are a necessary part of maturation. Sometimes there is scarcely a better vehicle to wash away the toll of stress and misery. Now that the issue has been resolved, you should also take a moment to relax. Give yourself some time to rest. Take a nap if you must. One will wake you in due time. The crab on the table sounds a little bit funny. <laughs> I don't think it's intended for the cousin for uh, the, the crab is there.
Oh. I always believed we would see each other again, that our days of separation would finally end, and all my troubles would be behind me. So the teaser in the trailer was really misleading when it came to her and her brother. <laughs> A nightmare? Curious. If you're relaxed, shouldn't your dreams be pleasant? It was a good dream. It's just... You weren't ready to wake up. <sighs> Eloquent as one may be, words of comfort are not one's strong suit. At least you saw about it. You are doing all you can. One can see your strength of will, your fearlessness in the face of danger. And so, whatever your dream may be, one believes that you shall achieve it. Of course, whenever the perils you face overwhelm you, or you become weary, one is always here for you. After all, as an elder, it is only right to look out for the young ones. <sighs> <laughs> chicken drumsticks. Of course, Pyron is dreaming of food. What else would she dream of? Huh? Uh, was Pyron sleeping just now? <laughs> the crap on the table. Talking to you, Paimon had a dream about eating grilled chicken drumsticks. That's all. M Madam Adeptus. Oh, sure you. You're awake. How do you feel? I like the implication here right now, though, because I think like she, um, Shin Yun was responsible for us to like um, have those dreams since she used her. Uh, construct there on the table probably with the intent to like make a stream of the thing we like want to have had the most or what like the dream about like their like most uh their biggest goal which for the kid understandably is seeing her grandma uh grandmother again for us seeing our brother again and actually like just casually be able to live together again for paimon still it's just food <laughs> this says a lot about like what paimon actually wants <laughs> See Granny again someday, so I don't feel so sad anymore. Madam Adeptus, could I uh, ask you something? Would you take me in as a disciple? That also explains her being dear and you went with Xian Yun. Because I also was like questioning about where Shu Yu came from, but yeah, you really are supposed to play the story before the uh, Lantern already went. Oh. And have you reasons for this sudden interest? I know Granny thought what she did back then was wrong. She felt really bad about it. Actually, not gonna lie, I really would have liked the hint about that. That like, when you start playing the event quest, that you will like, 
literally give you a hint that you should play Xian Yun's story like um, character quest before. Since stuff that's happening here is being picked up again in the event quest. Even though it's more of like um, in a casual context, but still. But without that mistake, I would have never been born. Even though Granny lost her memories, she never forgot to show me how much she loved me. So, I thought maybe one day, I could become a cool adeptus like you, and help a whole bunch of people, just like Granny wanted to do. Upon some reflection, one supposes you are no mere mortal. The fact that you undies blood flows through your veins is proof enough of that. If this is what you desire, one shall make it so. And still, I'm wondering how this is supposed to work out from like the biologic, uh, yeah, biological aspect, a scientific aspect. That she literally have has genes of a crane inside of her. Just would you hear it to me? Thank you so much, Madam Adeptus. No, uh, I mean, Master. Uh, Chuyu, are you sure about this? Paimon's gonna let you in on a little secret. We've seen Cloud Retainer's two other disciples, and they pretty much eat nothing but bitter herbs like Chin Chin and Violet Grass. <laughs> oh, me? <laughs> if you join them, you'll never enjoy One Min Restaurant's delicious cooking ever again. <sighs> How utterly preposterous. One has never enforced such a rule. Every individual must find their own path to enlightenment. So long as one retains a pureness of spirit, one's dietary proclivities are quite irrelevant. Well, you say that, but Paimon's not seeing any tasty treats up here now, is she? Although Mount Outsong is rich in natural beauty, its location does preclude access to certain finer mortal comforts. That is precisely why one plans to relocate to Liyue Harbor. Shu Yu shall have the honor of becoming one's first disciple in the human world. Whoa! You're leaving Mount Outsong? One has never concerned oneself with the location of one's residence. From the very beginning, one has sought only solace and peace. Yet in the end, all of one's disciples ended up in Liyue Harbor. Gan Yu, Shen He, Yuan Dai. They all chose a life among the mortal world. One has reflected on this fact for many years now. One can only assume that it is due to some failing on one's part as an elder or master. A failing, perhaps, of recognizing what it was they truly wanted. One is most curious as to what aspect of Liyue Harbor could have enticed them to remain there. <sighs> One could hardly offer an opinion on the matter, but perhaps some time in the harbor will prove instructive. Why are you all so silent? <laughs> Paimon is... Uh, just a bit shocked, that's all. So... Does this mean we can grab a meal together in Liyue Harbor sometime? Hmm. One has precious little time to squander. However, if one finds oneself otherwise unoccupied, one would not be opposed to the idea. One will be assuming the identity of a human while residing in Liyue Harbor. You should take care to avoid disclosing one's true identity. You won't talk to us, Yanyu. help you keep it a secret. So, uh, when can we expect to start seeing you in the city? Perhaps in two days' time. One has some matters to see to before one's departure. Preparation is the key to success, after all. One plans to put up various items from one's collection for sale. The earnings should provide for a comfortable living in Liyue Harbor. One has already picked out a handsome property near Chihu Rock. 
Tis no small purchase, but what is mortal life if not one expense after another? <laughs> Capitalism. Seems like you've really thought of everything. Then how about we meet up in Leeway Harbor in two days? A sensible plan. See you then. Again, oh, gonna make me also, wait. Also, why don't you take this suspense insomnia mechanism as a souvenir? Anytime you should feel ill at ease in the future, you may try quieting your mind and sitting in meditation as you listen to its melodies. It might help you find a new perspective. Awesome! Thanks, Cloud Retainer! Hey, didn't we promise Shincho that we'd tell him what we found out? Should we make a trip to the Feiyun Commerce Guild? It's totally up to you. I mean, we can. Can say, um. Can. You know, have the optional conversation, I guess. We meet again, dear friends. How did everything go? Great! And it's all thanks to you! You could go over the whole story with Singsha. Ah, I see. So the stories didn't get it right after all. Even though she was a celebrated heroine, she had to bear a heavy burden that most could not hope to understand. Thank goodness for the help of that Adeptus. At least she was able to recover what she had lost. Although I cannot claim to know exactly how their story will unfold from here, I trust the ending will be a happy one. Those united in a common purpose always find a way back to each other in the end. Thank you for helping me fill in the gaps. And don't worry, I'll keep this all to myself. It's not my story to tell, after all. Good boy. Okay. I'll actually do a short uh, bathroom break here, so be right back. And I'm back. I was already did the two days of waiting while I was gone. <laughs> uh, join the adventure. <laughs> Are you? Concerns are excessive and unfounded. This is but a simple collection of ordinary valuables. Such intense scrutiny is hardly necessary. Uh, to be quite honest, your insistence on that fact is my primary cause for concern. <laughs> In what way are any of these ordinary? Every single item here could be worth more than everything I own combined. I simply can't risk shelling out that kind of mora without proper scrutiny. If I'm wrong, I would never be able to earn it back. Not even if I worked every single day for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I guess her inventions make her actually quite rich. If she would ever, like, sell all of it. I have to be careful. I guess you can never be too careful. We're here, Quo! Uh, Miss Shenyan, what are you guys arguing about? Ah, perfect timing. This ignoramus is questioning the authenticity of my wares. I'll have you know, these items have remained untouched in my personal collection for several hundred years. To question their legitimacy is pure folly. Um, you know, humans usually do not live for several hundred years in Kenshin. She should be a bit, she should be a bit more careful about uh, saying stuff like that. Several hundred years? It, indeed. <clears throat> They're family heirlooms, you see. Passed down over many generations, as families are wont to do. Yep, yep, they've definitely been around a while. We can vouch for her on that one. Hear that? Had I not found myself in need of Mora, I would scarcely have had the heart to part with them. Indeed, you should consider it an honor to even have the opportunity to behold them with your own eyes. Doubt their authenticity any further, 
And I may just decide to take them to another buyer. Whoa, 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 please don't go. I apologize for any insult, miss. You see, I know full well that I lack the knowledge to judge the true worth of these items. If you could wait but a moment, I've hired an expert to appraise them for me. He should be here shortly. Let me guess, it's Shang Li? <laughs> an expert, you say? Oh, very well. I will wait for a little while longer then. Traveler, Paimon, this is my new residence. If you have cause to seek my company in the future, this is where you can find me. Master! Oh, it's you two again. Hello! Shiryu! You got a new outfit! It looks great on you! Mm-hmm. Master made it for me. I like it too. Huh? You know how to make clothes? <laughs> Do I know how to make clothes? With the support of the proper mechanism, sewing is hardly a challenge. Master, I brought in most of my stuff. There's a few boxes left, but they're kind of heavy, so I just left them outside. Fret not. I shall help you move them into your room. Uh, actually, I, I should probably uh, sort through my stuff a bit first. Everything's kind of messy right now, so maybe you could um, not look yet, Master? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it appears my young apprentice has her own fair share of secrets. No matter. Do what you must, child. Now, this expert you mentioned. When can we expect their arrival? Soon, soon. Ah, there he is! Here, allow me to make some introductions. This is Mr. Zhang Li, <laughs> My guess was right. consultant at Wang Shang Funeral Parlor and an expert in all manner of valuables and antiques. <laughs> Fucking knew it would be Zhang Li. <laughs> Mr. Zhang Li, this is Miss Shen Yun. She's the one who's looking to sell the collection of valuables I mentioned earlier. Ah. Uh. <laughs> huh. Ah, if it isn't Miss Shen Yun. It has been quite some time since our last meeting. What a serendipitous reunion. Shirley is really good at like acting though. He is so quick on the uptake. Oh, in indeed, most serendipitous. Uh, have you been faring well as of late, Mr. Zhang Li? Quite well, thank you. I was fortunate enough over the past few days to enjoy both a stroll in the mountains and a fresh brew of tea from the most recent harvest. The experiences left me with such insight and peace. Huh. Uh, so you two are already acquainted? And from what are acquaintance? How fortunate we are that fate has brought us together again. If you are otherwise unaware, allow me to inform you that Miss Shenyun is a well-regarded collector and appraiser. She is well-versed in all fields, and off celebrated for her impeccable taste. You stand to gain much from this opportunity. Why did it skip that line? Like, the was actor completely skipped the line as, in, um, as for the matter at hand. <laughs> you are too kind, Mr. Zhang Li. True collectors pride themselves on their wealth of knowledge and eye for detail. I can say without a doubt that you are foremost in that regard. Now she is just dropping her own ego. <laughs> uh. Why, you flatter me, Miss Shenyun. It would seem that you are as self-effacing as ever. <laughs> Not at all, Mr. Shangli. Not at all. Um. <laughs> while I am loath to butt into this conversation, I must ask, you two already knew each other, and you seem to have quite a cordial relationship. Can I be certain that you're not working together to swindle me? I mean, you never know. <laughs> huh, a preposterous accusation. The heavens themselves would collapse before we would conspire to do such a thing. Miss Shenyun speaks the truth. Contracts are built on honesty and trust. If that proves to be beyond your capabilities in this instance, this transaction may be taken elsewhere. Say no more. Let us depart. 
<laughs> I, I jest, I jest. It, what fool would still harbor doubts after Mr. Zhongli himself has vouched for the goods? Miss Shen Yun, Miss Shen Yun, wait. Hmm. <clears throat> I deeply apologize for doubting you. So, um, Mr. Zhongli, could you please give me a final verdict on the value of these items? There is no cause for concern. They are indeed rare and precious valuables. Take this mechanism, for instance. Though one may not immediately perceive its purpose, its structure and appearance are exquisite enough to merit it a place in any fine home. The same can be said for this one here. Few could hope to possess an item that so perfectly blends mechanical wonder with geometric grace. I am sure you have heard from your travels that the study of mechanisms is among the most wondrous arts in this world. With that in mind, I earnestly recommend procuring every last item in this collection. All right. Since I hired you as my consultant, Mr. Zhongli, I shall, of course, trust your good opinion. Then, in that case, Miss Shenyun, I'll take the lot. However, since the final sum is quite large, how about we start with an initial deposit through the Northland Bank? The Northland Bank? Huh. Oh, you refer to the fiduciary house. Oh, very well. <laughs> I fear people only use the term bank nowadays. In that case, I'll be off for now. I'll return to collect the goods once you've received the funds. <laughs> My friends, have you been doing well? We've been great. How about you? Paimon didn't know you were such a busy consultant. My days have been quite pleasant as well. I had been quietly enjoying a cup of tea when Mr. Shaozu requested my services. As for you, Miss Shenyun, I presume you must be looking to settle in the city? I must say, the name Shenyun sounds exceedingly strange coming from you. Perhaps you could dispense of that particular epithet in further conversation. Whatever for. Am I not addressing you as a friend should? <laughs> well... That is true, but... <sighs> Alas, refer to me however you will. After all, a name exists such that others may address you with it. One is hardly ignorant of that fact. <laughs> it would seem that you have gained many valuable insights over the years, Cloud Retainer. One has indeed. One's previous days were all brief. Now that one has made up one's mind to move and settle, one has gained a much better appreciation of the hubbub and commotion of the city, as well as the people's hard work and ardor. This city is much changed from how it was more than a thousand years ago. Not unlike the ocean tides, so too shall the movement of people ebb and flow. From turmoil to peace, enlightenment to aspiration, Human society possesses limitless potential. In another thousand years, the scene we witness here may change in ways that are impossible for either of us to imagine. All right, that's enough reflection for one day. No need to get all sentimental on us. <laughs> you make a valid a point, Paimon. Now that the sale has concluded, what say one plays the host as we try some specialty dishes together? One must profess great interest in trying bamboo shoot soup. Hmm. Perhaps you have forgotten, Cloud Retainer, but I once tried my hand at that dish. You were at the table on that occasion, so logic dictates that you should have already tried it. Oh? What occasion was this? It was a reunion between friends several centuries ago. Alas, you must have been too preoccupied to secure yourself a portion. Or perhaps our other companions simply availed themselves of faster reflexes on that occasion. Ha! Huh, hardly. Twas most certainly out of consideration for the others in attendance. In but a moment, one will show you what it means to have a true deafness of hand. <laughs> it is settled then. Bamboo shoot soup, mora meat, crab roe tofu, triple layered consomme. We shall enjoy the lot. 
one has already passed word to Shen Hun Ganyu to make a reservation. It is prime time for them to meet one's newest disciple. Is that agreeable to everyone? <laughs> it should be a most splendid occasion. Does Zhongli join us, though? Xu Yu, come now, it is time to dine. Ah, this gentleman over here is Mr. Zhongli. He is, um... <laughs> a humble employee of Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Zhongli. That should be everyone, right? Let's go! Sounds good. Actually, Master, have you ever tried Adeptus's temptation? I heard it's impossible to stop eating after even just one bite. You know, because it's super tempting and stuff. Is that true? Hmm, that sounds rather implausible. Although with the right preparation, certain dishes can be too delicious to resist. Huh? Why are you all walking so fast? Hey, wait for Paimon! <laughs> hey, hey, wait up! It's only like all of the dead dice start coming into the city. Oh, he's actually talking with Kuching. Hmm. Uh, one may have won the kite flying competition, Yu Hung, but this prize should truly be reserved for another. You need not be so humble, honored Adeptus. Among all the kites, yours was quite literally a cut above the rest. Please accept this prize. You deserve it. <laughs> Besides, I'm quite certain we owe a fair share of the success of this year's lantern right to you. If you insist, then one can hardly continue to refuse. However, there is another matter with which one would ask your assistance. Of course. Hmm. One would be much obliged if you could distribute this case of Sunglow tea among the Millilith on duty. The security of the festivities rests entirely on their shoulders, after all. One presumes they could always benefit from something to invigorate their spirits. That's probably the other, like, main craze, because she also fell into the tea <laughs> marketing trap. Cloud Retainer is so thoughtful and attentive to others' needs. I would expect nothing less of an esteemed adeptus such as herself. Understood. I'll get on that right away. <sighs> a fortuitous result indeed. One's tea surplus has hitherto resolved itself. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, skyward! Oh, Ganyan and Shannon are actually troubling you. I don't get it. Is something wrong, Shanha? Tell me, perhaps I can help. The color black doesn't get dirty easily, so I thought this outfit would be acceptable to wear to work. But Xiong Ling told me it was inappropriate. But inappropriate? How? She probably just meant the outfit isn't suitable for that particular environment and occasion. But for a festival gathering with friends, a nighttime stroll, or an important banquet, your outfit is more than appropriate, Shenha. So you're saying it's only something I should wear in front of important people? <sighs> I suppose that's another way to think of it. I actually really like these two outfits for the bubble town. They look really good. <laughs> okay. I was hoping there might have been like another optional dialogue between them and Zhongli over here, but... Oh, actually, there usually are no tables here. They really just put tables here for the character quest. Interesting. But it could be that like... Currently the time of the event is overriding that event. Okay. Oh yeah, commission stuff. Well, 
with that left open, uh, with that down now. I actually want to see what is this bend about again, Triumphant Frenzy. Um, you must complete a number of battle rounds when the time limit comes down and finish the challenge. You can select four characters to form a team. In this game, remote one here is actually a constellation you want for them. Oh, huh? interesting. To resolve each time character takes part in combat round, they will lose one resolve. Ah, okay. So this is just like a game mode where you have different race and you're like intended to continuously swap around your party. Um, okay. Your character just has the battlefields constantly changing. I mean, characters in your party have their HP increased or decreased. And the crit rate will increase. Okay. Hmm. I guess I'll try it out a bit. Oh, they are randomly selected. Wait, do I have to use the try characters? Huh. Yes, I do have to use the interesting. Okay. That makes it quite a lot more restrictive. Also, I've never played with Kiara or uh, Nuillette, so. Hmm. <laughs> Emerge, right here. The wind knows me. Fallen leaves adorn my... Check that! Express delivery! Nothing lasts forever. Emerge. <laughs> Let the mighty be humbled! Okay, and then I just can continually see add to it. Ah. Uh, I do need a fire character for the next round. And a healer would be nice. Hmm. Okay, this really makes it really interesting. Hmm. 
I'm not sure if this party will work out, but sure. I just want to adjust the order. Emerge right here. Coming through. Shot fallen leaves. Adorn my knight. Step right. A sight to behold. Right now, emerge. Right now. Here comes the finale. <laughs> Mm, I'm going to drive this party again. Right here. Emerge. Right now. I'm always watching. Emerge. Right now. Step right up. A round of applause. Wind strike. Yeah. Clouds high. The birds call. Woo. Right here. Right now. Right here. Yeah. Let's get this show on the road. Coming through. Service with a smile. Emerge. Right here. As one with wind and cloud. A sight to behold. Right now, right here. Yep, that went a lot better. Uh, sure, nicely. Hmm. Oh, they weren't refreshed their users. Interesting. Let's get down to business. Quietly now. Gotcha. Game's up. Fun uh, huh? Let me leave you first. Don't run away now. Stay cool and face your guilt. More. <laughs> A moment, please. And voila! A round of applause! 
busted. Here comes the catch. This might work. Big for all goes on water, but hey. Here comes the catch. Time to shine. Have a safe trip. Interesting concept this time around, to be honest. Okay, depending on how that runs to principal pose when a character is plunging attacks, like so much. Plunge on attacks, okay. You well, are not welcome well. here. No, my sword. Let me weave you a verse. Yeah, skyward! Seize the skies! A process of elimination. You get it. As you wish, main Fräulein. Huh? <laughs> Rain cutter! Yeah, skyward! Make way for the attack! Flicker! Get with me! Mm. 
Okay, lots of ice enemies. Um, yeah, water enemies. No, my sword. Witness the power of both. Yeah. Seize the skies. Let's begin. Stay cool and face your guilt. Midnight Phantasmagoria! Rain outlines your fate. Let me leave you. Skyward! Scatter! I will end you. Phantasmagoria. Uh -huh. <laughs> Witness the power of Gugwa. Skyward! Stray clouds converge! to the last second. Um, coming, I guess. Like two mighty DPS at this party, but hey, I think it will work out somehow. Have fun with this gift. Whirling snow. Clouds high. The birds call. <laughs> Useless. Disappear. <laughs> Worthless. <laughs> Worthless. <laughs> Embrace the ice! 
Fallen leaves adorn my. Dare to mess with me? Truth repeats it. Foreign. Lament. Useless. Okay. This worked out quite well, actually. Hmm. Okay. The force will not hold out for long. The defense action is consumed by raging inferno. Even not by judgment. The chicken rip rice or melt. It will be buffed. Okay. Rip rice or melt reactions. Interesting. Uh, enemies are like all fire enemies, or uh, at least in the first round, yes, they are. Are about to get dicey. Uh, Breaking new! Time to shine! Scatter! Skyward! Make way for the Adeptus! Oh! Busted! Say cheese! Things up from silver. Yeah, scatter, skyward. Seize the skies. Scatter, skyward. Shower me with praise. Let the world come alive. Hard hitting it. Make way for the adeptus. Okay. Hmm. Charlotte is not like the good um, ice application as I like expected her to be, but okay. Hmm. We just will have out a bit more. Gotcha. Shower me with praise. Time to shine. Ha! Teamwork is dream work. Skyward, scatter. Here comes the catch. Strike cloud. I also shouldn't mess up the rotation. Quiet 
Exactly now. Here comes the catch. Take it easy. Eh. Uh, the part of what is a burst lecture is you really, need like not a, a lot of like reaction procs to happen at um, at the same time to easily break those shields. <sighs> I'm also not with, uh, happy with the rotation for all of this. The rotation just feels so eh. Let the world come alive! Huh? Teamwork is dream! Hold that pose! Truth bomb! Yeah! Got him! Skyward! Seize the sky! Strike a pose! Smile! Let's light it up! Everybody stand! Yeah! Got him! Gray clouds converge! Yeah, no, this is not really going well. Yeah. I just don't see it how you're supposed to do with those four characters on pro difficulty. At least I see not how you're supposed to do it. I might try to figure this out on my own, but yeah, I don't want to do some intensive testing on this, like on stream. Thank you for com Add Astra Right, you can do like a claim all right. Yep. I haven't used this ever since you I update. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so wary checking into Catherine and it's like... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, Shauna? She got some stuff for her. Oh. 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 Let's actually do this and cry to put some stuff for her. Uh, 
eyes. I haven't been in my teapot for months. So, uh, that's a no. <laughs> I mean, I can look at uh, check in, into my teapot um, once I've done uh, this boss one time because I have to wait for a cooldown anyway. Uh, which one was for the white material again? I think Nemesis of Copelius was it. Yep, for now, yeah. Okay. A blade and Since when do they have ice element? I literally have no re reliable way to break that ice shield. You can tell I never usually fight this boss. <laughs> okay. I guess it will something, be something from my uh, freaking party here. Yep. Oh, yeah. This realm is. This has probably been accumulating for like a month or so by now. Why did I have those in queue? I think this was by mistake. What's the new stuff? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't been in a year in a while and haven't buying it out in a while. It happens. <laughs> 
If you ever ha Or just is for like ah. Well, the thing is, I'm not interested in, like, furnishing my own house and stuff. It's just like a gameplay and an element I've never been interested in, ever. I just built my region up once for just for getting the points and for some stuff, and then that's where I left it. This realm is tr and all of the structures I've put in here, I just put in randomly. Like you can see, I've never really done much in any of the other, like, landscapes. <laughs> like, literally building my own house is not interesting to me at all. This realm... Did it remove the people out in this? Ah, because you actually have to place them in the area that it was it. So yeah. It's also why I've never like played much of TCG as well. I'm not that much into card games really. It's more fun with actually playing it in people like IRL when you're together on a table. But if it's just against com CPUs and computers and stuff, card games are not interesting to me. The only joy of card games for me comes out of like playing against other people IRL. <laughs> and when I'm playing card games with other people, it doesn't really matter to me what card game it is. I've just like randomly played uh, Magic the Gathering um, with a few friends just because uh, they got into it a bit. They just gave me a rundown of the basic rules and then I just played them with it. And I may know not to know the rules in deaths, but for like just casually playing with friends. I know more than in a, than necessary. Get with me. Out of my way. Let my name echo in song. Oh. Nowhere to hide. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Incoming. <laughs> And it's also a thing I also have been like um, playing Yu-Gi-Oh in the past, for example, during like elementary school, because it was like big back then. But yeah, once I like, once I got into middle school, since then like no one fully played it there. I also lost my interest in Yu-Gi-Oh as well because I just had no one to play with any longer. And with my transfer to middle school, I, be I only had one other person with me, which I knew from elementary school. All of the others were completely new. And 
And I actually were the one the one person I knew from elementary school which was in class with me. We actually weren't on that good terms to start with. Because we also weren't like in the same class in elementary school. He wasn't like one of the other classes, but like on, the same year. Let's go. But in middle school we actually like it in at the one year we were in middle school. Um we actually like got really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> He's still one of my best friends to this day. And that only because of that like one year middle school because we were the um the only two who knew each other in class. <laughs> And after that, I tra transferred to a different school. And the concept of like uh, middle school and high school is different in Germany than it is like in the USA. You just have like different tiers of schools, but you stay in the same schools starting from when you did, um, you would usually get into middle school. You just have like different tiers of like where the curriculum is a bit more intensive, you could say. And middle school is actually more on the lower tier, you would say. And since I was like literally the best in class in my first year of middle school, I transferred into a bit um, into a higher tier school, you could say. Just since I already was bored in middle school. You could say I didn't really learn enough in middle school to actually make it worthwhile worth my time. Hello there, my tech. Mm -hmm. I'm doing nicely. What about you? Let's go to you. Do you actually still have like to probably reload the area for the bus to respawn or is this is by now just like cool on timer? Let me check. Looks like they should probably fix it by now. Yep, I am German. <laughs> you figured me out. How many more do I need for my Navia? Uh, thank you for the follow. Ah, the follower go alert is going off in chat, but the stream alerts are not going off. Not sure what's wrong with Twitch there. <laughs> Hmm, it was now here again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
this. Bad timing from your dad, I'm guessing. Oh no, don't tap. Okay, gotta wait for the stupid respawn timer again. One would expect it might have improved this respawning and farming stuff a bit more since this actually have done that for the domains, but nope. Over boss is still on an unnecessary long time. At least they improved the overview of the anime list in the in the notebook, but still. <laughs> no. <laughs> you should get on cooking as soon. It's already like close to dinner time. Depending on yeah, when you usually do your dinner, but yeah, it's always evening. <laughs> you can do that after dinner, I guess. Speaking of dinner time, once I've like killed that boss one more time and got rid of my resins, so to say, I will also be ending the stream here. Because, as I said, it's getting close to dinner time. <laughs> I can't wait to see how this turns out. <laughs> no, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it depends on my mood after dinner and depending on if I have like something to do after dinner or not. Like, spontaneously. But I feel like I might be streaming stream another game later tonight. <laughs> yep. I think you've been uh, watching me play it on my German streams. But I actually like. Uh, managed to get through uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Reading Story. But there's actually like um, a lot of stuff left to do for post game stuff, which is also turning out to be a bit more grindy, as I've already expected since I know the mobile game. Um, but since my focus for like my YouTube channel is like, just like to show off story, uh, and, like focus on story in the games. I do not want to like waste a lot of time for my streams there on like grinding out post game stuff. So I thought I might just um, shift it over to here for Twitch and do it on here. Also, since I'm like, I won't like do it regularly, just like. If I got some in between time between my uh, streaming projects for YouTube and like the Iris con and stuff, when I've got some like time in between, I might just grind a bit on Crime Profits and Reading on stream here. I also might not all stream all of my grinding on stream. That's also a thing. This would just be a casual thing I will do in between whenever I feel like also streaming it. But my mo but my progress could be different depending from stream to stream sometimes, depending on if I do something uh, off uh, off stream or not. <laughs> and such a streaming format just fits just fits not to my YouTube channel. It's just not fitting into the concept there. Hmm. Okay, 
Okay. I think with that they reach uh, the spawn timer should be done. Do I have to reload the map again? Ah, uh, yes, I actually have to reload. Hopefully this will be enough. Okay. I remember in the past being that you have like to teleport quite a lot further for the map to probably reload it. At least they fixed that by now. And yeah, I haven't grinded over bosses in a while. So yeah. Everyone hold hands! Our bond is strong! Out of my way! Make yourselves a rule. With sword comes shadow. Incoming. Hey! Speed of light. Good idea. Yep, all right. But as I said, with that, I would actually be ending the stream here. So let me just look if like someone is um, online for raiding. Mm, like some of the usual suspects are raid or not. Mm, uh, sadly not. That means I would like try to find someone random. Unless you and chat have a suggestion. A suggestion to to raid. <laughs> You're welcome. That's always fun, huh? Mm. Yeah, I'll just pick someone random, I guess, who's also streaming Genshin, then. Just so that there is, like, no big shift in, like, game and, like, theme. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's read a fellow smaller YouTuber. <laughs> um okay. So just not letting not allowing me to raid. Ah, okay. Not sure what's the issue here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Um yeah. Twitch seems to make some seems to be making some trouble for me recently, but anyway. There's also some issues loading some stuff from time to time. If it's not letting me raid, I don't wanna like search around for too long for someone else, and I will just be ending the stream here without a raid. And yeah. With that, as always then, our next plan for Genshin will be will uh, like to do the world quests of the new region uh explore the region to farm all, at least farm all of the spirit cups just to get 
those collected. Since like, it seems, at least it looks like they are equivalent to the uh, oculus, uh, oculi you have in the usual region. So yeah. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I will see you again another time. Maybe tonight, depending on if I will stream or not. I will decide on it spontaneously. And yeah. Until next time, I will see you. Bye bye.